the Leinster Championship, the Munster Championship, the Joe McDonough Cup. 15 teams all started the summer with a potential pathway to make it to this day. 15 counties, some with different goals perhaps, but all sharing the one dream. There were bumps and bruises, there were twists and turns, a couple of upsets along the way. And yet, when we make it here to the biggest day of them all, there's a very familiar feel to today's lineup and a very familiar feel to the rivalry. A rivalry that stretches more or less all the way back to the very foundation of the GAA. Since the beginning of the GAA, there's a fabulous rivalry between Kilkenny and Tip, and um, we're all looking forward to it. It's the final most people have wanted to see for the past couple of years. It's almost, you know, timeless. It's just been been there forever. So will it be a blue and gold year, or will it be black and amber once again? Kenny tip rivalry goes back to the, I suppose, to the very start of the GA and I suppose being next door neighbours just really adds to the rivalry that's there. That's what makes the GA that they can actually go together to these games and they can sit in the same stand together. But the rivalry is fierce. There was always great talk about the, this famous hoodoo. It was 45 years since Kilkenny beat tip. This is a big game. We're playing Kilkenny. So the final underway. If this final was going to be won, it was going to be won the hard way. To John Parr. Who oh, was a great shot. So a chance for Michael Cleary to extend Tipperary's lead once again to a two-point lead. He's got a goal. Well, that was right out of the blue. It's all out. My first real, I suppose, encounter was the 2009 all Ireland final. I suppose it really kind of came to life that year, and how much, I suppose, both teams really I suppose go above and beyond to try and uh, to try and get one over on the I suppose you could call it the old enemy. It's Kilkenny who are the All Ireland champions for 2009. They are the first team to do four in a row. And we knew after that final in 2009, we knew yeah we can match these guys. We came across each other every year in the championship for, for a good number of years. You go to 2014, the first game, the drawn game. People will look at it as, as being one of the greatest games that was played. Neither team deserved to lose. It was an absolutely fabulous game. 2016, uh, that day in September was a really special Tipperary day. I know 2016 will be a huge driving factor for Kilkenny. It hurt a lot of those players. You know, they've been itching to get back to an All-Ireland final. They're going to be ready to go on Sunday, and uh, we have to be ready. It'll be a very close game. It's very, very hard to call. You can never write off this team, and in particular, Brian Cody. I just think the commitment that you'll see from both sides would be total. Um, and I'm expecting a cracker. The 2019 All-Ireland Hurling Final is here. Kilkenny taking on Tipperary again. The throw-in is at half past three. You'd imagine the calm before the storm. This probably the busiest place in Dublin this morning. Not now though, a bit closer to here in fact. Both set supporters appearing to arrive in high spirits, probably high on confidence as well. That may not be a unique pairing. But you do get the impression there are quite a few people maybe arriving at their first senior All-Ireland final between these great neighbours. Already is it, it is absolute bedlam out on the streets out here. The feeling that this one today could be epic.
Oh, there are a few occasions that can rival an All-Ireland hurling final, if any. And the men beside me have all experienced the good ones and the bad ones. Donal Logue, Anthony and Henry will take us all through this, it this afternoon. Actually, not all of you have experienced the bad ones. The only man with a 100% record. Yeah, just <laughs> play the two, one to two, Joanne, instead of leaving it that. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you get nervous? Because you're actually, I know you tend to be buzzing on big championship days. You're buzzing. You seem nervous. Is this an All-Ireland final that does it to you? Yeah, look, it's a great day, Joanne. Coming, even coming in there early this morning, like the people around the place, the energy that was around Crow Park, and that was like half past ten, right? And today is like Christmas Day for hurling people, really. You wake up in the morning, where else do you want to be only going to see an all Ireland scene a hurling for England? Kilkenny versus Tipperary, it's been story down throughout the ages. I know you might say they've met five times in the last decade, but you know, if you could see Kilkenny and Tipperary playing every year, of course you want to see it. It's Maybe fitting, not to the it's final. Probably, it's probably fitting yeah. that they book in the decade, yeah. like I would have said that as well. Like, you know, you had your Limerick, Galway, Clare. Cork coming close, Waterford coming close, Dublin getting it near us, but then the big two in the decade have been these yeah, two. I, I, us I, I think finds. this one is a bit refreshing because Kilkenny certainly didn't think we were going to be here, and I don't think Tipperary thought they were going to be here earlier in the year. So I think there's a there's definitely a freshness to it that we probably haven't seen earlier in the decade. There was probably you know we were so used to each other. So I think that that's good as well, and it's adding to the whole energy around the, the occasion. I think I, I was laughing there because you're the calm man at the edge. Is that because you've had such good experiences in these days? Oh, well, no, I, I don't think I'm calm, you know, of course I'm nervous, so, um, but I think y you look forward to it, you know, it's no different to a player for ourselves, we're preparing all week, and when the, the occasion arrives, when the telly goes live, you know, we're here, we can enjoy it now, and we can just sit back and just enjoy what we're going to see unfold in front of us, and I think that's what the whole hurling public love about the day and the general sporting public here in Ireland just really enjoy as well. Now, many of the things you have to deal with in any big games are reports and rumours of what's happening. The big one this morning, if yeah. anybody picked up their newspaper, is that your man Adrian Mullen talk about his not being about, that he's been sick all week. You have an added inside scoop because not only are you his Ballyhell manager, but his sister was babysitting for you yeah, last well, night. Yeah, I didn't want to get Adrian in trouble by hopefully Brian Cody taking him off thinking he was talking to me in advance of the game. So, no, Adrian has been sick. Uh, uh, Chanel, I must say, was a very good babysitter and very important for me. Uh, did a great job yesterday. <laughs> but she did also That's all anybody wants to hear about But him. she did also tell me Adrian was sick earlier on in the week, Tuesday and Wednesday. He didn't train Wednesday night with the lads. They kept him aside, but he's been fine. He was down in the local hurling field yesterday morning, by all accounts. So I think he's good. And it's, look, it's how do you so, mean by all accounts? Was he sharp? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if he was sharp yet. You, but you I mean you weren't there? No, I wasn't there. No, I was <laughs> off doing something else actually. So, but uh, no, I think he's ready to go, and it just. I think it shows social media, isn't it, Joanne? How Might actually be a help team, Joanne, if he's fine, as we're hearing off Henry now, that, you know, people talking and you were sick during the week and a little bit of extra pressure off for your first final as well. It might, it might work in his favour. Yeah, if we see him getting off the bus, Joanne, there's no question he's going to start because if he's suffering from a bug and he's hmm. not recovered, he isn't going to be anywhere next or near, near the team. So, yeah. you know, we uh, see him getting off the bus. The bus. He'll, if he's on the bus, he's playing. Yeah. His, his club boss is confident. And Brian Cody has told us, actually, because Kilkenny arrived here a little while ago, he told us that Adrian Mullen is OK and that he will play today. Now, speaking of Cody, he and Liam Sheedy will be meeting in an All-Ireland hurling final for the third time. It's even between them at the moment. Kilkenny competed a four in a row when edging out their neighbours in 2009. And then Tip prevented any history of being claimed a year later with a rather convincing win. Now, nine years on, and these two men look to outsmart each other once again. Would I be doing this if I didn't enjoy it? Not a hope. I mean, nobody would or nobody should, you know, because if you enjoy something, you can give it everything and you can have that real drive and determination to do it as well as you possibly can. I've been in hurling, sport is my sport, you know, I've been involved and the players who have been playing would love to stay playing if they could. You can't keep playing, but you can keep managing for a fair while at least. When I got the job the first time, I, I made myself a promise that I wasn't going to leave no stone unturned in terms of my quest to make sure the team played to its potential. And I suppose it's very much the very same template that I've gone with again. I did love the Sunday game, and I love getting the chance to sit in the studio and talk about the game that I love and the game that I, that I grew up with and have got so much from. But I always felt that if I could give something more back, I guess I still have a really, really close affiliation to these senior players. And, you know, there's a really good young group coming up, and there's a lovely group in the middle as well. So did I feel pressure? No. I'm doing the job that I'm privileged and honoured to be, to be carrying out, and I'm doing it to the best of my ability. If that means we come second, tenth or first, I know that I've given it absolutely everything. There is a nice plan there, experienced lads, providing good leadership, but the younger players as well, they're good mature young fellas, they're genuinely ambitious. 
they don't take too much teaching to be honest you know they're really really focused I suppose seeing great players go before them and that and they'd love the opportunity to play at that level play with Kilkenny and aspire to getting to play on All-Ireland final day and it's there for them now It's all over and Tipperary have won the All-Ireland dramatically a superb fantastic display by Liam Sheedy's team and the five in a row has been banished once again that takes its place in history and you're delighted to have that. But really, if you ask me, you know, from my time involved, I would probably look on the journey of the three years. You know, that's probably where the most enjoyment is. When the match is over, the match is gone into the history books. But certainly from my perspective, it's the three years I had with a wonderful group of players. Since I was a child, I mean, Kilkenny and Tipperary were neighbouring counties. Huge tradition in both counties, huge passion for the game in both counties. Tipperary were almost unbeatable for a while and then Kenny came, came along and beat them in the final eventually in 1967, which is probably a lifetime ago. And you know, I played for Kilkenny. I never got the opportunity really to play against Tipperary in any meaningful kind of way, championship-wise. And now it's the last number of years, obviously, has changed and that. Great teams, you know, coming out of Tipperary, so many different teams coming out. We're in the all Ireland final and regardless of who the opposition is, the same thing applies. It doesn't really matter who you're playing against or it doesn't matter to them either. It's the ambition to win it, it's the opportunity that's there, it's huge. There will be always days where you're challenged, there'll be days where it doesn't go right for you. Probably maybe the two greatest learning experiences we got in this championship was in the league quarter final and in the Munster final. So we learned a lot about ourselves and I suppose you can either lie down and say it's over or you can dust yourself off and, and go again. And, and obviously when we fell flat in the Munster final maybe we were written off in, in a lot of quarters. But that didn't affect the group or affect the circle and you know we still believed in ourselves and went about our business and it probably drove us on to new highs. We have shown enough in this season to know that when we play to our level we're a serious team. I mean, we knew going into that game we were playing the other champions, like outstanding other than champions. So for us to be competitive in that game was going to be a challenge, you know. So we really had to prepare well. The players had to have huge focus. And we obviously got a great start. And even though we did for, say, 20 minutes dominate, we went in at half time two points up, you know. So they certainly had their period of dominance too. But it was a magnificent battle, you know, and a terrific display from both teams. And thanks be to God, we just finished ahead. Look, he's a phenomenal man. He's a, you know, he's a wonderful leader. A huge admiration for him. You know, that's that's where you want to be when you take these jobs. You know, you want to find yourself walking up and down the sideline against, you know, one of the greatest managers ever. But for me, it's not about Liam Sheedy versus Brian Cody. This is all about the Tipperary team of 2019 facing off against the Kilkenny team of 2019, and the best team that performs on this day will be All Ireland champions. Ultimately, this game is going to be won inside the white lines. I suppose you think about what Tipperary going to bring. All you have to do is look at the last 25 minutes of the game against Wexford. You know, they were down to 14 men behind in the game. They were hit a couple of times during that period of time and they came out on top showing magnificent resilience and character and, and, and skill and everything that was good about the game. So what kind of a challenge is facing us? Monumental. And the teams on what is at the moment a lovely day at Croke Park have arrived. So there's the man himself in his 17th All-Ireland Hurling Final. Adrian Mullen is among those who have arrived here as well. And uh, we heard that there's Paul Murphy, of course. We did hear uh, the lad say that if he comes and if he gets off that bus, he is absolutely going to be playing. So, Henry, you're confident now? Yeah, I didn't actually see him there, Joanne, so... <laughs> uh, but no, I think, I think he is there. There's so many younger faces in it. But I know I, I think he's confident, as I said, the word in the street was. And I think he's so important to Kilkenny this year. I think there's been a difference in him. You know, he scored 113 from play. In the last two games, he's been outstanding. He scored four points against Limerick. So the energy he brings has added that new dimension to the Kilkenny forward line. So he's very, very important. And that energy level he has, I suppose, is the big question mark, whether he has that fully today as well. Because there has been this bit of history about when Kilkenny play a man who's perhaps not 100% fit in an All-Ireland final against Tipperary. It hasn't necessarily... It's all right, it's all right now, anyway. <laughs> it hasn't necessarily worked out, but, but, there is, but there is always this massive risk, isn't there? Yeah, I suppose. Look, uh, 
an illness maybe and you're fully recovered mm. and you're well hydrated, you're fine again, Joe. And really, like, look at Denis, it was a different thing, maybe, you know. Yeah, I, I, we all have pre match nerves, so it's not like we all went into the match perfect, you know. It's, a lot of us suffered a lot of nerves. I remember yeah. my first Lord Ireland against Tipperary in 2009, and I'm lying in the bed and just absolutely just wrecked. Oh, there he is, actually, yes. No, we're, we're, we're happy now, we're a lot more comfortable. <laughs> he looks good um, and strong. Yeah, but like, nerves play a big part in it, you know, and for a 20 year old, they're going to be part and parcel of it. So. Lots of smiles outside, but it's a real mixture of some great sunshine, quite a bit of rain out there as well. Doesn't seem to be dampening any spirits, though. For what, of course, is a sixth All-Ireland final between Kilkenny and Tipperary in just 11 years. Out in the streets around Croke Park, you're liable to bump into so many people with so many different types of connections to today's games. And Claire McNamara and Darren Maloney are in the thick of it all. Yes, Joanne, we are out here on Jones's Road and when it's Tip and Kilkenny involved, you will always bump into All-Ireland uh, winners and I found two of them here. Angela Downey from Kilkenny has 12 medals. Ken Hogan, of course, winning keeper for Tip in 89 and 91. But today, you're both parents. You both have sons playing in their first All-Ireland final. Angela, Conor Brown, your boy will be in midfield. Have you been speaking to him this morning? What's it like? Yeah, my baby is starting in midfield. Um, not an awful lot of conversation this morning, very quiet, has been very quiet all week, just kind of monosyllabic, how are things, fine, yeah, grand, yeah, I'll be fine. So a lot of tension, a lot of nervous energy about the place, I think I'm more nervous and apprehensive about it than he is, which is a good thing I suppose. And Ken, uh, like you, Brian is in goals, have you been speaking to him this morning, what's his feeling? Yeah, he was up, mother had porridge made for him and half eight mass and bar and uh, all systems go left and headed for Port Leash uh, for the bus. So for, uh, from his point of view, I'm trying to find out the matchups. I'm sure Angela was the same. We're hearing nothing. You know, you hear nothing. It's very close. There's great trust within the squad. And from that point of view, it's a great day for, for, for both families. Angela, of course, you've been there as a manager and a player. Do you give him advice? Does he listen? Just a small bit of advice. Just do the simple things well and, you know, what will be will be. Do you give advice, Brian? Very little advice, you know, just say look forward to the game, Brian, be mad for the ball, you know, and, and uh, as I say, play your natural game as if you were playing with your club. And that's the only advice you can give a, a guy at that time. Will you be able to enjoy it, Angela? No, no, no. It's, um, I get involved anyway, even if I'm only water woman on the sideline with the camogie, I'm hitting every ball, so it's going to be uh, a long 60 minutes, 70 minutes, 75 minutes, whatever it's going to be today. Is it the same for you, Ken? Is it enjoyable at all? Uh, I suppose the enjoyment comes from, you know, uh, him making this situation and I suppose every player is the same, every parent is the same. They're looking forward to the game in trepidation, you know, everybody's wishing the best for everybody. But from, from our point of view, when it gets to an All-Ireland final stage, you know, only one team can win, so you have to be prepared for the worst as well. Well, best of luck and I hope it goes well uh, for both of your boys today. Now, uh, Darren Maloney is also out and about. Let's uh, check in with him. Yes, thanks, Claire. Well, we're here on the Sunday game set. It's been touring all over the country, celebrating 40 years. And I'm delighted to be joined by David Herity and by Connell Bonner, two guys who know all about hurl All-Ireland hurling finals and know all about Tipperary and Kilkenny. And David, I suppose for you, first of all, does, does being around here today, does that bring back memories of, of your days? It does, yeah. There's always that massive bit of excitement. You know, even any time we ever play Tipperary, there isn't always, there's always that extra bit of suspense there's everyone's nervous you see around the place no one's able to call the match but like you know obviously the day of a match when you're getting that guard escort we're, we normally met up in the crown plaza and as soon as you get on the bus the guard escort just literally the bus would go silent and the nerves would start building so it's uh i'm sure the lads right now they're just finishing off having their small bit of food they're getting ready for that and it's it, that's when you know it's all early sunday and connell i suppose look we're, we're out in the middle of the crowd like it's mayhem it's bedlam now thankfully the players don't see any of that but you know they're, they're in this bubble away from everything just with their thoughts with their teammates and with the game well you do get a sense of the crowd as David says when you're coming on the bus and all of the fans so that expectation and then the realization that there's so many people depending on your performance you know for that day and it actually builds up huge amounts of nerves but all of these players are so experienced, they're used to that. Most of them have seen All-Ireland Finals, so they're used to that and they'll try and manage that and think about their own game and manage their own performance. I'm not going to ask you for a prediction, but just that the fact that it's Tip and Kilkenny, for you, I, I'm sure it brings it to a different level. Yeah, um, I only got to play against Kilkenny once in the championship and that was in 1991 and it was a fantastic experience. But these lads have played against Kilkenny 
five and six times and they've you know they're really really well used to it but uh yeah it's just fantastic and look i have to call it for tipperary obviously yeah. and david you yeah i, I think <laughs> surprise me no yeah no I, like there is there is that, that that bit of suspense at the moment between Brian and Liam that there's, it's one all, it's even two all in this decade between Kilkenny and Tip. But like, and whoever wins today basically wins a decade between yeah. them. So it's it's building up brilliantly. I think Kilkenny just about. But if if like I do know how I suppose angry he mightn't have said it publicly. Brian was when Liam bet him and then retired. So to get a chance for him to get a chance back now to try and beat him again, I think it's going to be huge. I think Kilkenny just by two points maybe. Okay, well, I hope the two of you enjoy the match today yeah, and you're still yeah. talking after which I know you both will. And that's it from us. We'll talk again in a while. I have a feeling we're all going to enjoy today's match. Go, we are enjoying the minor one because there's Ian McGlynn, their captain. They had a victory over Kilkenny today, 314 to 12 points, and it makes them champions at this grade for three years in a row. Congratulations to Ian McGlynn and his teammates as well. Now looking ahead to the senior final, we're going to take an in-depth look into some of the key features of any big game, particularly an All-Ireland hurling final. The three lads have been charged with looking into the few features that you often hear talk about. You often hear talked about when any big game comes along. You see, um, Donal Logue, the first one we talked about is a good start because we hear players speak about this all the time. Every time ahead of a big match, it's what you bring up. But what is it actually is it actually entailed in it? Because everybody's told that. So how do you make sure that that's what actually happens? Yeah, well, look, too small land and Hibbert, there's a lot of truth in that, right? And all of the boxes will be ticked by by boat management, the players. They'll have done, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have been prepared for everything. But you don't really know until you go in the field, are you at the level that's required? And the easiest example is to look at the first quarter between Kilkenny and Limerick of this, right? Kilkenny. They were the first two sidelines that Kilkenny hit. Almost in the same position here, look at the contrast from a Limerick sideline ball, right? Kilkenny were so clinical in terms of it. Even there, Paul Murphy picking out TJ Reid with a really crisp pass. From a physicality point of view, it just was so obvious that Kilkenny were at a level that Limerick weren't ready for in the first 15 minutes. This was a perfect example of there. Limerick have been really good over the last number of years when they're in possession, holding possession. They just couldn't compete in that early stage. With the result then, if you're looking for results, Limerick turned over possession 59% of the time to compare to Kilkenny's 37%. And the last one in terms of scores, 1-8 to 2 points. Limerick lost that game by a point, so for the next three quarters they did really well. There's a saying in the Tour de France that you're not going to win the win the Tour in the first. Uh, you're not going to you're not going to win it in the first week, but you could lose it, and I think the same is true of our sport. Mm. Yeah, definitely that that game. Anyway, you know, even talking to Kyle Hayes, met him during the week, and he said, oh, "We were ready for it, but we couldn't cope with it. The level of intensity." <laughs> it's an amazing, and then just won eight to three points all of a sudden. And I think it's even more important for our Ireland final day because there's so much extra goals with it and the build up to it to get a good start is critical. The one thing that you are not going to have here is you know, when you're always talking about not wanting a team to be complacent going into a game, yeah. like there's going to be no complacency yeah. here. Tip might be slight favourites amongst uh, yeah. people when they're talking about it, but that's not going to be a factor in this game today. A lot of these games between the bigger teams have often been very, very tight at the start, and I wouldn't be surprised if the first quarter here, that there was nothing in it. So you do have all these goals about what's going to happen in the game, but then when things go wrong, what do you do? And who stands up? Yeah, well, at that stage then, it goes outside. The manager's control, it's over to the players, and we've done a package on the in face of adversity and how that is. And I was just thinking about that in advance, and there was one moment that captured that for me, of a player facing adversity and how you do it. It's Brian Hogan. This was his last play ever for Kilkenny in, in his inter-county career. Last minute of 2014, All-Ireland, he gives away a free, but his reaction, it's accountability, it's decision-making, it's character. I won't react, because Barry Kelly would have brought the fall, ball forward if he had. had. Right, and what will Kenny have done this year? I think Kenny struggled in the Leinster final. Um, here we are against Cork in the first half of the All Ireland quarter final. They were pulled out, their half back line was completely sucked out, exposed their full back line. Brian and his management team at half time did that tactical realignment. That, that was the adversity they faced. Right, the half backs are going to sit back. And here we are, here's uh, I've highlighted Pori Welch and Conor Fogley. See him, Limerick on the ball, we're dropping back. Give protection to our full back line. Now, what we do see in this clip as well is the ferocious work rate of the Kenny forwards. They turn it over. Now, Horik Welch has switched on. 
it's time for me to attack, get up there and support. And I think that has been the biggest change for Kenny this year, has been that, that tactical realignment. Now, Tipperary's is a lot easier, right? We've questioned their character over a number of years. You know, they were facing John McGrath, second yellow card. Here it is, the match was level at that stage in the All Ireland semi final. Five minutes later, they're five points behind. Then you look for your characters, you look for accountability. No more so in this game than Noel McGrath, his own brother. Stood up to the plate big time, give me the ball, make me make the big decisions. Again, I wanted to highlight Noel McGrath because look at his vision here. Seamus Kennedy's simple pass. He's, you know, he's just assist an 80 yard cross field diagonal ball into Seamus Cannon. I think Noel McGrath is going to have a big say in this game today. He's had 22% of all of Tipperary's scores, has a hand in all those scores. He's the key playmaker for him, he's the creative link around that field. And in that semi final, when they needed someone to step up, just like Brian Hogan did in, in the All Ireland final 2014, you make the right decisions. And that is going to be critical again in the biggest day of all. And we will get to potential people who might be dealing with the likes of Noel McGrath a little bit later. But um, another one, we, we heard Henry talk about tactically realign, realigning at half time. Mm. From a man who's been in the dressing room, who's had these experiences, like we make a big deal out of half time. How big is it? Yeah, well, John, I've never been in a dressing room with Brian Cody or Liam Sheedy, so I can't account for, you know, uh, but going back, and I know I, I might be going back a little bit into ancient history now, but, you know, the, the last massive game I was involved in was Cork and ourselves in the semi-final, 63,000. And we actually, we played the first half as if we were going six on six, shoot out. We figured Jimmy Barry might like that. Half time then, we completely, David Tracy came out from the corner, we see him highlighted. He came out, Danny Sutcliffe went and picked up Johnny McCaffrey's man, and we see Johnny highlighted as the extra guy not a sweeper but an extra guy in the middle third and we got a grip on the game completely at that stage we had great ball winners in that team with Conal Keeney with Ryan O'Dwyer fellas like that and we see Sutcliffe here popping up as a midfielder he was playing left half forward but Cork did not cop that really and really eventually start to cop it Pat Cronin goes deep here so Liam Rush is allowed to collect the ball and he sees a pocket of space puts it in not the greatest ball ever now from Rushy but Keeney so good in the air able to snatch it I think we sucked Cork into that fortunately then we picked up a red card I suppose two yellows and it changed the course of the game but for me it was something we had pre-planned we went down the tunnel just a point down and we were going straight plan B first puck out for Anthony Nash David, plan B, and it was David Tracy had to call it from the corner. He had to tell Danny out, and Danny to Johnny McCaffrey, loose, and then he was able to float in that area. And that was pre planned. Obviously, if Cork were seven points up, it would have happened 10 minutes into the first half, maybe. <laughs> but it worked out for us. No, we didn't win the game, but I, I thought for that period we had taken control of the game. And Anthony, out of interest, like, had you, was that the first time that you had trialled that or did you, did you do that on that day? No, we, we didn't do it against Kilkenny because we played them the, the two times in Port Leash, which was tighter. But we did it here against Galway in the Leinster final and I figured that Jimmy would expect us to do it from the start. So we said, no, we're going to go shoot out. We have the players to have a good go at a shoot out and then plan B for the second half. Now, it wasn't as complicated as you'd see at Wexford at the moment where there's wing backs and full backs coming from everywhere, but that was our, that was our system. It worked to a certain extent, we didn't get the result, but I think it did you know, give us control of the game when we used it. So many mind games and so many things to look into, but everybody's probably sick of us talking about puckouts. But there is a reason why you talk about it all the time and set plays as well. Yeah, look, they're extremely important, Joanne, right? And what we did was to try and put context around it is that we took every time the referee blew the whistle to start and stop a play and called it a phase in both semi-finals, right? And we're going to show it here when Kevin uh, brings it in, right? So we looked at all of those phases. So it was 108 in the Wexford and Tip, 112 in Kilkenny versus Limerick. The interesting one here was the ball in play time, if you look at it. On average, the ball in play was only there in it for just under 33 minutes, 32.46, in what we all now know is an 80-minute game, right? But if you look at the origin of all of those phases, and like you say, you know, you hear some commentary about people talking about puck outs and freeze. This illustrates, to me anyway, as to why puck outs and freeze are so important and are such a, a critical part of the game and why the goalkeepers and the free takers are so important. If you take it down a level then and you actually relate that to scores, again, look at the freeze here in terms of the contribution from the origin of freeze to scores and puck outs. 
turnovers being another critical aspect. But from a set player point of view, it's so important that you've got that nailed down because it has such uh, a big bearing, if you like, on the outcome of the game. And a more simplistic one, bringing it back to our discussion. If you bring it back to puck outs, you look at long puck outs here, right? Kilkenny love the long puck outs compared to Tipperary's. Having said all of that, we're fully aware they're small details. When it comes down to it, hunger is the key thing. Killian Buckley, everybody saw the, was obviously aware of what happened at the end of the All Ireland semi final. That wasn't the first time that Killian did that. That clip that we saw there was from the 2016. It was Seamus Callan's first opportunity for a scorable free. And Killian stretched every bit of his fibre to try and impact in those set plays. But I think looking at those numbers there, it shows that there's a good friend of mine has a has a commentary on when you're assessing games. He says, have you got a good goalkeeper? Have you got a good free taker? And have you got a good manager? And there's a lot in what he's saying. Uh, and I think one of the critical parts on that, a puck out predominantly in the Kenny Tipperary games land in the half forward line. I think that half forward line is a key area. So I think the interesting stat there was Kilkenny's is nearly 60% because we have TJ Reid there, <laughs> Tipperary not 40%, and they're missing Bonnermar as well. And that's going to be a massive. I think people area at home will be amazed, Joanne, that you know, the chunk uh, from freeze and puck outs that's contributing to the scores. We'll all be on about the intensity, who worked harder and everything. But it's really, if you don't execute well, when you have the ball in your hand, it's a restart in lots of ways, but, or a dead ball situation. But also a feature of the modern game is the men who finish a match as opposed to just the ones who start it. And that's the way it's gone, John. Um, look, at, we, we, we hear so much about it in football, the dubs, that they like to finish with a, a better team. And for me, Richie Hogan, it's great to see him back. You know, he's a lot of injuries, back injury. But I'd say at half-time, the last day, there was a feeling there, Richie, can you give it? 10 more minutes, 15 more minutes, you know. And he looked leggy to me. I mean, poor crossfield ball straight to Barry Nash. Now, TJ doesn't give him the greatest ball here, but he just looked like the strength was nearly gone out of him going to the ball and he gets sandwiched. And, you know, straight away, 45 minutes, Brian said, freshen it up, out. Now, look, Tip were in huge trouble. They were in huge trouble. And look, at one of the criticisms all year has been that Liam hasn't used these younger guys after 21 from last year. But what a contribution. Willie Connor straight away, Ger Brown might have been a goal. Do you know, right into this. Mark Keogh got a point. I mean, here, I don't know why this was disallowed. It, it, the advantage rule should completely mm. say Jake Morris after getting the winning goal in the Munster 20 final. And again, like, here's really now where it is. Like, Paddy Foley had a great game, but this is a tired effort by Paddy on a fresh young lad and what a score and it was the insurance point in the game and I think you know you have to give great credit to Liam and his mentors Joanne on it uh, we would have maybe said all year should have gone with the younger lads earlier and better them in but crucially they are down the stretch and how confident now will those lads be when they appear uh, today and yet, when we say all that and we talk yeah. about, the, about the potential of who might came, come on, there are two men at least, no, McGrath has, certainly has a, a save in it as well, but there are two men in particular vying for hurler of the year. Largely, a lot of it would be based on today, the outcome, Yeah, they're the team leaders, they're captains, they're the team leaders, the key attacker, and here's the first one, TJ Reid. Like, it's just clutch players. Like, all we've spoken about before, at the end of this show, we're going to be speaking about one of these players, well, one of the key players of the game. And this is the clutch player. Kilkenny are struggling in the semi-final. Limerick are coming back. We're a point down. TJ Singles, give the ball down on top of me. And this is the leadership qualities we speak about. Just, that's what I'm talking about, puck outs. Win him in the air cleanly. Again, it was the composure, not to go for the score, get the ball in. Kilkenny get the second point, win by a point. And obviously then Seamus Callan. And I think I was sitting home in front of my nice warm fire on the 26th of January this year, and I saw this clip on TV, and I went to myself, there's something different about Tipperary and something different about Seamus Canlan. He chased 60 yards there to get a block on David McInerney. That's what you do in the winter time, so that when the summer comes, you get up here to Crow Park, then you can express yourself. And watch him here at the end of the screen, we track him, shoves Liam Ryan out of the way, makes a 40 yard dart, and look, just the finish was just immense. You know, the way he kept his eye down over the ball, he scored 7-16, all from playing the championship this year. He doesn't assist as much as the other forwards, but he's just a score getter. And those two players, look, are worth the entrance fee alone just to see what's going to happen today. Well, quite a few of the players out there today will be worth the entrance fee alone. And we're going to be continuing our build up to this 2019 All Ireland hurling final in just a couple of minutes.
is the place to be. This is where it all happens. My one's not working. But if you're struggling, what am I? It's that time of year again, and Dahi's raring to go. I don't know, I think I can pull off that tux. I don't know if you can pull off this dress, but... As the roses get to shine... Do I hold on to something? Oh! oh. Woo! Over two glittering nights. The Rose of Tralee International Festival 2019 starts August 26th on RT1. This is the man who fought for civil and religious rights for all, for separation of church and state. He advocates against violence. That's the politician that I always wanted to talk to. Daniel O'Connell, Forgotten King of Ireland, Thursday at 9.35 on RTE1. Dance with me! Oh, I'd love to. even when you can't on the network that's built for data now with 97 percent 4g population coverage three make it count we danes believe anything can be improved with a positive outlook like could we reinvent the wheel by adding another or could we take a pastry and give it a twist could small refinements make a big difference and create the most balanced pilsner in the world Probably. Mega laptop deals are now on at Curry's PC World. Save 160 euro on this Lenovo laptop with 128 gig fast start SSD now 359. Save 200 euro on these HP Pavilion 15s with 128 gig fast start SSD now just 399. Or save 300 on this HP 14 with 256 gig SSD now just 599. Trade in any qualifying laptop and get an extra 50 euro off all these deals. Get in store or online at Curry's.ie. Introducing Tropicana Whole Fruit, a new way to drink fruit. We don't just squeeze, we also scoop to keep more fruit fibre, more of the whole fruit in every drop. I was uh, adamant that I wanted to tell people, but Sean was saying he didn't want to tell people. He didn't want anyone to know. As he felt, people would be, oh, that's the man with Alzheimer's. I felt it was important that people would know so that they would look out for him down the road when things might go a bit astray. I would ask for help and it's, it's always been forthcoming, which is great. And I would say to everyone, you know, ask for that help. Don't, don't let yourself sink under the, the weight. At Leia Healthcare, we know you have a lot to juggle in life. That's why all our schemes now offer one-to-one -one expert advice on things like your mental health, finance and legal issues. Through our new 24-7 mental well-being support program. Available at no extra cost. It's good to live. What is it about where you're from that can silence the doubters and gives you the courage to be true to yourself? That little girl in me didn't need to hide her differences anymore. It can even bring you back when the odds are stacked against you. Yeah, chemotherapy. And the hair started to fall out. Brilliant to get back out there. Where you're from is everything. Super Value. Proud sponsors of Where You're From. Movie buffs and sports fans are about to clash because the sale that stacks up is back. Switch to Virgin Media and get super fast broadband and TV with Virgin Media Sport and now with the choice of Sky Sports or Sky Cinema. All for an awesome 55 euro a month for 12 months and 89 euro a month after that. The sale that stacks up, now on. See virginmedia.ie. Centra. We are hurling. What a day and what an occasion. Just about 45 minutes to go now to the All-Ireland Final between Kilkenny and Tip. 
And this afternoon, James Owens will take charge of his third senior All-Ireland final and his second in a row. And this fixture in the past has produced some dramatic moments involving the men in the middle. Dara is with two of those men. Yes, uh, Joanne, I'm here with two men who refereed eight All-Ireland senior finals between them, Brian Gavin and Barry Kelly. And, and Brian, I'm just wondering, first of all, look, what, what is today like for the referee? What are we, 45 minutes from throw-in? Yeah, you're in the dressing room now, Dara. You're going through the last few little bits with your umpires and your linesmen, just, you know, re-topping up what you've told them already all week. And it's a great occasion. And, you know, you're going out there to represent your family, your club, your county. This is a huge day for a referee. It's the pinnacle of his career. This is what you're training for. This is what it's all about. You're dependent on your team now to quench anything that's going on off the ball and give you the biggest dig out they can but most importantly after a couple of minutes get into it and enjoy it and relax and be yourself and that's the only job you can do is just be yourself and do the best you can because there's huge pressure out there yeah and like Barry that's the thing the pressure and as an outsider looking in you, you always think of the officials because there is an awful lot of pressure there is on the players too and the managers I know yeah I suppose there are the main thing is, I suppose, that a player gets in the game after three or four minutes and the player gets his first touch, gets his first score. As a referee, you can't really fully relax until after the final whistle because you could have a, an excellent first 68 minutes, 69 minutes, 70 minutes, and then suddenly you could have a decision in the last few seconds that could be controversial or could be costly or could be, you know, spoken about. So you can't really fully relax. But to be honest, as Brian said, every referee in the country would give his left arm to be yeah. where James Owens is today like and you're just getting mic'd up now at the moment and you can't wait to get on the pitch like and when you come out to the pitch you know after the two teams come out like the buzz the colour it's there's nowhere else you want to be to be honest like yeah. even now I'm well past it and yeah. well, <laughs> this fellow was well past it before, before I was <laughs> and like you'd like to be out there still to yeah. be honest yeah. and Brian the fact that um, like Barry uses the phrase about being mic'd up but our produ producer will be able to hear the referee and uh, hear his communication with the players is that something you welcome? That's for the first time today. Now, it's not broadcast anywhere else, but is that something that you would welcome? It's excellent, Dara, because there's a terrible breakdown of communication between the general public, even going to matches, people looking in the television. They're not sure of an incident. It'd be brilliant now if Marty lets them know today, along with Michael in the commentary box, exactly what that was for. You know, the producer and RT can hear what's going on. And it only that's in helping everything going on because the referee, and there is a lack of understanding between referees and the general public, players, supporters, and management. And I, I welcome it. It's like... VAR, I think it, it's a certainly coming down the line, and anything that can assist the referees is a big deal. Okay, gentlemen, thanks very much today. Hope you both enjoy the game. Uh, good thanks, to see sir. you both. We'll hand back sir. to you, Joanne. Thank you. Yeah, massive pressure on James Owens today, but he, he does have the experience behind him. And we heard the two lads talking about the fact that we will be able to hear what is being said. It's not for, for broadcast, but it, it, what's your thoughts on that? My thoughts on it, Joanne, is it's very welcome, right? I, what I would say is, I do think they have enough jobs to be doing at the moment, right? It's an incredibly difficult thing, as we've spoken about before, to go out there, ref the game, take down the scores, watch what's going on off the ball, be conscious of substitutions, all those things. So another job is only going to add to the challenge, but I would say it's a welcome one. OK, coming up next, we'll be hearing from two of the leaders today in this return to a more traditional All-Ireland final. We live in an ever-changing world. We saw Expected brings the unbelievable. It's all over. Dublin remain in the All Ireland Hurling Championship. And it's all over. Leafs have beaten Dublin for the first time in 14 years in the championship. A place that thrives on chaos, each moment altering the next. Limerick celebrates. They are monster champions once again. But despite the occasional disruption to the balance, the true fact is the strongest, fastest, the most cunning survive. It's time to commence battle. It pulls the trigger!
The scrap for Liam already well underway, representing the blue of Tip. You've got Rory McLaughlin with Michelle Caff and uh, Cash in the black and amber of Kilkenny. Those two charged with bringing Liam McCarthy out onto the pitch here at Brook Park. And the tip captain, Seamus Callan, has now taken his scoring, and particularly his goal-scoring records, to even greater heights this summer. Paul Murphy is a member of that full-back line, tasked with trying to keep the tip number 14 quiet. Those two men could play crucial roles for their teams this afternoon. Look, it's a huge part of all our lives. Small part from Drummond Inch, you know, it's, it's a conversation every Monday after a match on the Sunday, and it does take, take over your life, really, but... You know, that's, that's all we want to do, like, we just want to hurl. You don't realise, I suppose, in the moment what you're doing because you're just enjoying what you're doing and you realise to a certain extent with your club and with your family and your parish, but you don't realise how far it reaches, but it's, it's brilliant, again, it's just brilliant to be a part of it. It's brilliant that you're doing something that people enjoy and that you're, I suppose, having a positive impact on that. We have so many leaders, you know, you even see the guys playing with the under-20s at the moment, like, they have huge leadership qualities as well coming in, so, you know, we have a core group of older guys but then we have, you know, another group there, we say that the Ronan Mahers, the Jason Fords, the Seamus Kendys, and then you have the younger group of the 20s and that's all. We're lucky at the moment and, you know, there's two All-Ireland finals to look forward to now in, in Tipperary, which is huge. You know, we have a lot of players that were there in 2016, 15, 14 and so on, but we have a lot of new blood. Tipperary are the very same. They've seen players pass on over the last few years and retire, but, you know, they have that core of the team and they have the new players coming in. Both of us have that great balance. It's, it's, it's the best way to really have it because you have this raw energy within the dressing room, a savagery to win in your first All-Ireland or whatever it is, but you also have this experience that goes, well, listen, if you don't prepare properly and you don't perform properly, it's all for nothing. I think the dressing room is it's a very healthy place and, you know, if words need to be said, well and good, you know, somebody will say them and you kind of earn the right, I suppose, to stand up in the dressing room and address the panel. And I think every player uh, this year has really bought into something and, you know, there's a, there's a huge respect amongst the group that anyone can, can say anything and contribute. I think Brian has talked about it afterwards, you know, how important it, it was for him and the feeling. But I think that you just know when you win a match where that sits, that feeling is just something else. And especially that day, look, I think it's a testament to the respect we have for Limerick because we couldn't have performed like that if we just thought, if we had no respect for them or if we didn't consider them a great team. They've been the farm team for the last two years. We saw the challenge and, you know, Brian realised it as much as we did that unless we performed to an absolutely, I suppose, a level we haven't shown in the last few years, we weren't going to win it. We walked away from Crow Park that day with no cup, with nothing to show for it. But the satisfaction of going out and just standing up against the challenge, facing it down. I mean, that's, that's just a brilliant part of never mind hurling, but sport. And we were just part of it that day, and it was, it's a great memory to have, but it's a memory now, and we have to park it. When you have the likes of the Noel McGraths and players outside you, like Niall O'Mara put on a play for me last day, like, you know, so when you have these players doing that work for you, it's your job when you get the opportunity, and it's the same, it's, it's the same for the Kilkenny forward line, like, you know, they get them opportunities, you know, they'll be trying to score goals, and. Just, but thankfully they've been going in for me and it's, it's a very nice feeling, obviously. We've played these, these players, I suppose, the likes of Brendan Mars and Park Mar, you know, th these lads are all, I suppose, my age. I've played them since I was under 14, 16. We just always seem to meet these players and the core of that team are so experienced and probably the rivalry is born out of our respect, really, because some days they've gotten the better of us, some days we've gotten the better of them, but I've never been part of a bad match against Tipperary. There's always been a rivalry with Tip and Kilkenny, but it has always been a really, really good, uh, healthy rivalry, and it's it's one you enjoy. You know, there's no bitterness. It's just it's two really good hurling counties just just going at it. You know, the game has evolved an awful lot as well in the last few years since since we met in Ireland. This is a new challenge, but you know, this is the place where you want to be. For us, really, it's just a simple case that we know they bring the best out of us, and we bring the best out of them. And nothing less than a savage battle is going to happen on, on August 18th. And there he is himself, Shamey Callanan, just made Callanan making his way out onto the pitch, leading out the Tipperary side. To believe Shamey Callanan and a few of his teammates playing in their seventh All Ireland final, that includes a couple of replays, every single one of those games against today's opposition, against Kilkenny. And there, speaking of the Cats, there they go out. One of them dropped their hurley on the way out.
They were on their tails. It was close enough as well. <laughs> yeah, the way they yeah, came yeah, out, yeah. Was, you don't see that too often. The last yeah. time we saw it, there was an awful built in match. Yeah, what happened there, Donald? Yeah. 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 I, I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so a huge day, and we all know that Wally Walsh obviously uh, made a massive impact in an All Ireland final a few years ago as well. Who is going to be the key member today? Actually, talking about Shamie Callanan, we were just hearing from a little while ago, um, Henry. That stat, the fact that he has scored a goal in every single championship game this year, seven goals in seven games, just tell us about that feat. Well, I, I don't know, I don't know nothing about it myself, but he's just phenomenal. I think the, you know, his achievement is just, but every time he gets the ball, he's going for goal, Joanne. He just looks for the goal. Even that clip I showed of Noel McGrath, that was the last minute against Wexford. In injury time, they were a pint up. He could have easily tipped it over the bar. That's what the common sense thing would have been to do, but he went for the goal. And I think uh, what I should touch on for any young boy or girl watching at home, but TJ Reid and Seamus Callanan are standout players here. But you know, you spoke about Seamus playing the seven All Ireland final. The last All Ireland final with Liam Sheedy was manager. Seamus was one of the subs. You know, both of their careers have been a lot of symmetry. They struggled in the early parts, but they've really bossed them now. And I think the thing that both players have brought is the amount of work rate they have. And the last thing I'd say, I heard Paul Murphy saying it there about a healthy rivalry. We've heard that, heard that commentary a lot today. I think the players, yeah, there's great respect, but there has to be a bit of hatred there. You have to want to go and win this match. Are you saying that's nonsense as a friendly I think it is. But look, to be fair, the lads have to say there's healthy rivalry, but they're going to go and they're going to absolutely tear in. And Paul Murphy's not going to hire him back for Shamie Callanan. He's not going to take it easy. And I think you just have to have that bit of bite. And that's what that man brings to teams. And I will say, Mr Sheedy has that bit of bite as well about him. So there's going to be a clash there on the sideline as well. Um, that's interesting when um, Henry says Paul Murphy referencing Callanan. Who is going to pick him up? I mean, because this is a massive day for Hugh Lawler, isn't it? It is, uh, Joanne, and he's a player I really like, and I think he has a huge future. What was the feature, I think, of the Wexford game, if you look back on it? They went long, direct puck outs, maybe looking at a rookie fullback. He struggled early against Cork. He came really into the game in the second half. He struggled early on Aaron Gillan the last day and had a great second half. So, you know, there's stuff in there, but if you struggle early on Jamie Callanan, you could be looking at two green ones, you know? So, I hope it goes well for him, you know, because he really, he's, he, I like his attitude. He's, he, you know, in both games, in a bit of trouble, and to be able to respond is a great sign of a young player. But I, I think it's not to be exposed. So the last time here, Seamus Callanan scored nine points from play from full forward. Kieran Joyce was centre back, got completely pulled out the field. And that's what I was saying earlier on. Porrick Welch needs to give some protection to Hugh Lawler. Hugh Lawler is eager, mad to go, but he needs that protection as well. well as you showed in your, in your analysis as well, Conor Fogarty is going to sit yeah, as well. Yeah. So we can't see a 16 scenario unfolding here where there's no protection. Because yeah. if they get ball inside, it's virtually impossible to mark them. But, but it's what way they allow those players to drop back, is it not, Donal Logue, and, and what then they leave free in other areas in the case of what they sacrifice? Yeah, look, like, like Henry said there, that's, that's the key thing. You're not going to see Seamus Callanan isolated one-on-one -on -one with Hugh Lawler today. And if you do, you'd have to say that Kilkenny will be in trouble in the full-back line. It, the way the game has gone, the way it's been refereed, it's very hard to mark any player man on man. And the way the tackle has been, been, been refereed, you need other opponents coming in. What I would say is, that's a huge, on that side of the field, it's massive, Callan against Lawler. But on the other side of the field, for me, Colin Finley has been the unsung hero of this Kilkenny team Correct. all year, right? And I actually think it's the biggest decision that Tipperary have today, how they're going to mark Finley. Finley's two goals turned both the quarter-final yes. and semi-final. So for me, that's every bit as big on the other side. You'd be surprised if it was Barry Heffernan, to be honest. Better known as a half-back. Fine against Wexford because you knew there was going to be extra space. And we saw Barry, Barry Heffernan coming up the field in on a point for Ger Brown there in, in the analysis. But I think Ronan Maher will have to be sacrificed to go in and do the job there, you know. Very good in the semi-final, very close to being man of the match, and uh, I, I think they'll have to go down that route, even though not his natural most comfortable position either. OK, we will get more into matchups a little bit later because there are so many of them to discuss as well. But for now, let's go pitch side. Claire is joined by Jackie Tyrrell and Brendan Cummins.
Yes, yes Joanna, we've got nice sunshine down here at the moment. There is a strong cross-field uh, breeze, though. The team's out, as you've seen, and Adrian Mullen uh, warming up, looking fit and well behind us, despite all those rumours. Uh, Jackie, I imagine there's a few things in the world that match the adrenaline of that run-out that we saw a few minutes ago on All-Ireland Final Day. Yeah, uh, there, there's nothing to rival it, to be honest, Claire. It's 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 the ultimate feeling. Uh, to be a bit of toe tapping going on in the dressing room. You just want to get out, get a touch for the ball, uh, blow off some steam, get a feel for the place, get that there's a nice breeze coming across into this corner where we stand in now. Um, you know, it's been a long build-up for these players. They're out here now, they're ready to go, and it's just... Now, it is different All-Ireland all Ireland final day. You have to meet the president, there's a few other extras, so it's, it's bringing it to the boil, but being ready to go a half three and, and, not, and, and being ready for that time. Brendan, as a player, it's all in front of you at this point in time. Is it overwhelming for some, though, that noise, that pressure? It can be at times, but I think both squads will have chatted about it during the week. It's enough experience to sign that dress and say, right, lads, we're going to be out in the pitch for a half an hour. We're going to be shaking hands with everyone and their mother in that meantime. But at half three, when the lights go up and we go shoulder to shoulder with a guy wearing a black and amber jersey, you need to be ready to fight on your back. And I think both will have the composure to let it, like Jackie said, to control the nerves. It needs to be here, not up here or down here, just here. And both have had enough experience in the dressing room to get over that. Let's talk about the managers. You've been here a dozen times on final day when Brian Cody was your boss. What's he like around about now? Yeah, well, a lot of work Brian will have done during the week. The matchups, the team, the tactics, puck outs, all that. It's just about keeping the lads controlled. Maybe a little word in the ear for Adrian Mullen, Connor Brown, who Lawler in the first one. You know, just reaffirming what they're about, what they've done, building them up, keeping their confidence. The rest of the guy, TJ and the lads, Richie Hogan, they're born to play this. They've had the experience that Brendan has alluded to. So, you know, the work will be done. It's just making sure that everyone's ready to go come half three. Brendan, you were here, of course, with Liam in 2010. What's he like in the final moments? He's great, you know. He's, uh, he's the passion. When Liam talks inside there in that warm-up room when they're inside that huddle, he'll be talking about what needs to happen in the first five minutes as much as what's supposed to happen in the last five and get a good start. But he's a great motivator. He'll also have delegated during the week a lot of stuff to Eamon and Tommy and Darry Egan but essentially he'll stand on the line he trusts his players that's it they will have tactics to a certain extent and we'll touch on maybe in a while but he says right lads you're the men who are supposed to win the match just go out and do it for us Jackie it's been billed as the Kilkenny intensity versus the tip firepower is it going to be that simple? I don't think so, Claire. That will probably make up a lot of this, but there'll be so many matchups, key matchups in it. The middle third, as we talk about, that is the trenches. That's where it's going to be fought out. Uh, how long Kilkenny can keep Tipperary in an arm wrestle in that middle third, it'll suit Kilkenny because of their intensity levels. But look, this Tipper Tipperary team, they're a serious outfit. Some of the best hurlers in the country, and Seamus Canlon, the best forward, I would say, himself and TJ, could be a bit of a shoot out there. But I think the, the, the matchup of Conor Brown to pick up Noel McGrath, it's about getting quality ball into, into the inside full forward line. Conor Brown can limit Noel McGrath and get him poking ball off his back foot. Hugh Lawler is very strong in the air. Give a chance for Parik Wells to drop back, cut out that space. That'll be a key matchup. Brendan, give us the keeper's view. We were talking to Ken Hogan outside. Obviously, he's son Brian playing in his first final here today. We know what a super form uh, Owen Murphy has been in, but it's no longer about keeping out goals. These are the people who manage the game. It is. You're pretty much the quarterback. And we play Kilkenny like, and I did it for years to my cost, booming balls down. I used to find Tommy Welch regularly with puck outs, you know what I mean? But now you do have to place it that little bit better. But there's a responsibility on the Tipperary half back line as well and midfielders to show for him. I know Brian has a great striker of the ball did well against um, Wexford the last day and he's puck outs and all so I think he will be able to deliver but the responsibility is also on the receiver of the ball to get into a position but Tib will have to work to their own 65 I think today and take a few chances and if they do there's huge reward if they can come off of that OK well I'm not going to ask for final predictions because I know you're both sticking to your counties uh, so we'll soon find out which one of you will be right but now let's go upstairs to Marty in the commentary box Thank you very much, Claire. Yes, indeed, the excitement is building up. A packed arena of 82,000 plus on a very special day. And the man beside me, Michael Dignan, it is a very special day, not just for the people of Tipperary, Kilkenny, and indeed of Ireland, but for you as well. Jubilee team. Yeah, Marty, uh, 25 years ago, we won the All-Ireland against Limerick. Um, there's uh, Michal Keneally, wouldn't wear the shirt and tie, would like the rest of us, but, but um, <laughs> Martin Hanley, the captain. Some of the, some of the greatest <laughs> players of all time, Brian Whelan, and uh, look, it's fantastic for all those lads. Great, great bunch of men, great friends, and we're delighted to be here. And a big thanks to GA for having us here today. And this was your very first All Ireland medal. That was it, '94. We went on and won again in '98. It was a great year for hurling, and as I say, great guys, and we're great friends to this day. So fantastic to be here. And I have to say, Michael, I've never seen you looking so well as well. Well, I, I love a free suit. A good free suit. <laughs> let's let's talk about uh, this match. I mean, how do you feel right now? Ah, uh, look, it's unbelievable. Every year is the same, Marty. The excitement, the the you know, it's this is 
the, for the players are out there settle down um, I just think you know it can go either way but Tipperary to me uh, I think have been the team of the year and I think they're going to do it by a couple of points OK Michael well let's uh, have a look at the teams let's start with Kilkenny Kilkenny goalkeeper Owen Murphy has been the regular number one since 2013 and today seeks his fifth All-Ireland medal. In contrast, his fullback Hugh Lawler made his debut for his county in Sydney, Australia in the Wild Geese match last November and so today plays in his very first All-Ireland final. He's great experience all around him. Paul Murphy, Joey Holden in the corners and the half-back line of Conor Fogarty, Porrick Walsh and Paddy Deegan. Midfielder Conor Brown is the son of the legendary Angela Downey who won 12 All-Ireland senior camogie medals. He joins Killian Buckley, who's the only change to the team at the start of the semi-final. TJ Reid is the main man up front with five goals, 72 points in seven matches. The Valley Hale connection remains strong in the full forward line, with 20-year-old Adrian Mullen playing in his very first All-Ireland beside his clubmate and indeed cousin, Colin Finlay, who'll be hoping to win his fifth All-Ireland medal. Tipperary goalkeeper Brian Hogan follows in his father's footsteps Ken Hogan, who was goalkeeper in the 1989 and 1991 All-Ireland finals for the Premier County. Fullback Barry Heffernan will be 24 tomorrow week and would love an early birthday present by winning an All Ireland medal in his very first All Ireland final. Carl Barrett and Ronan Maher are named in the corners while the half back line looks very strong. The two Mahers, Brendan and Pawdy, along with Seamus Kennedy. Noel McGrath and Michael Breen have formed a formidable centre field partnership this season while the Tipperary attack is bubbling with talent, highlighted by some creative minds and beautiful wrists that John O'Dwyer and John McGrath can provide. There is leadership too. Captain Shami Callanan has scored a goal in every match and notched up seven goals and 16 points in seven games. Brian Cody can call on some very talented young colours if the situation arises, like Conor Delaney, Enda Morrissey, Richie Lai. But there's also some experience there, and he may look to James Ma, Liam Blanchfield or Jerry Elwood. The Tipperary substitute bench is very similar to Kilkenny, with lots of new young talent, like Joe Brown, Robert Byrne, Mark Yo, and Jake Morris waiting for their chance. But there's a few wise heads there as well. James Barry, Willie Connors and Sean O'Brien. It's All-Ireland hurling final day. A full house of 82,000 expected. The atmosphere is buzzing. The coin is about to be thrown up by the referee, James Owens. The tension is palpable. And it's only 12 minutes past three. And Tipperary look to have won the toss. Kilkenny versus Tipperary. Coming your way shortly, Joanne. Thank you, Marty and Michael. Big day for him, but he's well used to it, as is that man, although he's played a few less than his opposing manager today. Um, we saw TJ Reid and Shamie Callanan there, Henry, and you mentioned the fact that it took Shamie Callanan actually a while to get into the Tipperary team. TJ, it was very, very similar, and we've heard lots of people talk about this during the week about how it's his, it's his improved work rate that has made him the player he is. But the nicest piece I saw was Chris O'Connor in the Examiner when he was talking to you about him and the stories about when he was just a young lad in Ballyhale. Yeah, no, and you know, TJ grew up the road for me, and uh, his mother, Lord Mercy Mary, was a great hurling woman. His father, Sean, is as well. But they were first, they were first people in Ballyhale to have little goalposts, so it was a big novelty. <laughs> so we used to walk about 20 minutes up the road to go and play in the goalpost with TJ in his paddock. They and got very popular all of a sudden. All of a sudden, there was loads of friends going to TJ at that stage. <laughs> but he was only four or five, and even at that stage, you could see Joanne. He was going to be special, you know, just constantly with the ball and hurl, and has changed no different now. And uh, you know. You know, we can talk about who's the greatest and all this kind of stuff, but I think what we should do is sit back and just admire. Admire what he's achieved, admire what he's done. And I saw him, I had the pleasure of managing him. I've seen him down in the local Bally Hale field doing things and training. And last year we were playing a club championship match. He missed three penalties in the first half. Three penalties. But he went out in the second half and scored 112. He got a goal from about 60 yards, soloed in. He got a point where he was facing the opposing goal. And that's TJ, that's because the years and years and years he spent practising his hurling and his love of the game. And I think that's what we'd love to see show us today. It wasn't by accident that the great Michal Amarhertig said, Reed the magician, yeah. you know, yeah. and he can really make things happen. Has he still the chickens, by the way? He still the chickens, yeah, and the calves. <laughs> that keeps him fit as well. But he used to go home from school on the bus, and if he spotted you in the field in Ballyhale, he'd... Oh, yeah, I'd say TJ would rather not go to school, to be honest. He, he just wanted to commit the field, but I was off for college and stuff. And TJ used to get off the bus and I'd see him coming across, I was in WT at the time, and TJ come in from St. Kieran's, he'd throw the bag and in he'd come through the hedge in the ditch and uh, he'd walk in and he'd stand behind the goal and puck back freeze to me and it's great to see here he is now taking him across Park. From a tip point of view though, who is going to pick him up? A lot of talk about Brendan Maher marking him. If Brendan Maher is on him, he's going to just try and stop him, right? A lot, a lot was said about Stephen MacDonald 
doing a good job and he did a good job albeit probably lacked any creativity in that part of the field and by virtue of the fact of trying to, to mark TJ Matthew Hanlon has done well over on him o over the time but like you're talking I know Henry doesn't want to talk about the greatest and stuff like that but like the greatest hurler in Ireland at the moment is TJ Reid and we're going we're gonna to see him out there today when I look at him I think of like it's like as if you've got the genius of Carey the wrist that Carey had with the, the physicality of Frank Cummins all rolled into one and like the results he's after scoring 572 this year that, that's we're talking 12 and a half points like he's gonna like that's a huge contribution to every game 12 and a half points per game and 261 from freeze like John McGuire is a good free taker but I think that TJ just has that edge on him in terms of consistency yeah we're gonna pick a man dodge in, in that tip defense to uh, Mr. Dependable to me it's Brendan like you know back from a cruciate I mean, what a return from the Crusade. Um, what a leader he is, you know, brilliant captain in 16, carries himself so well, top bloke, really level bloke. If you ever meet him, you know, he's a sound man as well. And, you know, I think if Liam gives him the job today, he'll do a fair job on it. I thought Limerick erred in just before half time. They brought, when Declan Hannon was in under a bit of pressure um, with an illness or an injury, they brought Kyle Hayes back. And I thought they erred in the second half and not leaving Kyle centre back where he won an All Ireland under 21 on TJ just to prevent him winning that clean possession from puck outs you know because Kyle a big man in the air uh, Brendan mightn't be the greatest in the air but he would be a great man to prevent uh, a catcher I'd say be very clever even if it's the last little push of the hand at the last second or a little one handed little flick rather than trying to as we'd say, whale. There's no point whale and TJ Reid, you'll be whaling away all day. He'll still come down. He, his eyes will be wide open. He'll come down with the ball. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see because, like, Tim won't want Parik Maher coming out with that kind of free centre back role. So, like, it, it's, it's along with putting Brendan on TJ, it'll probably allow Parik to play the way he likes to play. But he's a seven but, all his life, though. That's, 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 that's where he'll want to play. So are you, are you saying that Maher would prefer to play in, in an out-and-out, as in Porg Maher would prefer to play in an, an orthodox wing-back as opposed to drifting in front of the, the full-back Well, well absolutely, as well as that, he doesn't have to watch TJ and follow him everywhere he goes. He wants to have an influence on the game. He wants to be that creative player from the half-back line. He wants to be busting up the field. Yeah, plus so we nice. suspect that John Donnelly is going to go very deep as well to you know, cover the half-backs. So like, if Porg sits there, then like that's it. That's a dilemma then for, for Kilkenny, like, uh, does Adrian Mullen wind, wind up trying to come out as well to close down Parik Maher? Because you can't, like, Parik Maher getting a score here is like yeah. two scores for any other Tipperary score. They love him. Yeah. I think that what the image that Tipperary will want to be watching from the sidelines is everybody else being, being marked. Obviously, the, the, the battle going on in the middle third, but Parik sitting in that free role where he can have that influence yeah. that you're talking about him. Yeah. What about the other um, man? We know Parik Maher is great for supplying both in but the main man for assists is the man with the number eight in his back and that's Noel McGrath if you cut off the supply from him have you got half the battle won I think you do yeah and I think you know his role is I showed a clip earlier on with Seamus Kennedy he spotted Noel he gave it to him because he knows he can create it his peripheral vision is just second to none and I think you know we talk about what Liam has done what Liam has done is brought Noel McGrath from wing forward centre forward out to midfield to give him that space you know he doesn't have this speed of some of the other forwards so he can do that creative thing um, so he's massive you know as I said 22% of all the scores he's been uh, been involved with so that's that's a massive influence and I think the lads have touched on it Connor Brown as a man from Kilkenny point of view did a great job in Keane Lynch the last day midfield and they'll be hoping he can do that again you know as well that is the, the likely pairing yeah tall order I suppose for Connor you know good lad no you'd have to like him um, Tall order. I think Michael Breen actually could be the, the flying the ointment here because when Breen hits a goal on day, Joanne, he can be devastating. We've seen him coming up the field getting goals, scoring four and five points in games. You know, how fit is Killian Buckley? Do you know, came on the last day, looked to me to be struggling. Two weeks, is he right? Do you know, I'm not so sure what, what way that would feel, but I, I would say that that's a slight advantage tip. Um, interesting there, even watching the warm ups. You know, the, the tip fella is very busy sprinting in and out of the circle. Brian having the boys in a huddle, probably saying, Joanne, I, 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 I don't know, Henry'd have a better idea. He's probably saying, remember, like, what's required of me here? Get, get back to basics here. What's your job? 
you know, and, and like I can imagine Co coming out of Cody's mouth as well, you'll be saying, yeah, he told me one or two things during the week and bringing you back down to that crucial moments like for everybody. I think Tom, Killian Buckley and Lahey, I think what influenced that decision, Anthony, was Lahey is a great player to bring on, bring on and would potentially have a bigger impact getting in between the opposition half back line, maybe more so than Killian Buckley. I think that was a big factor in that decision. Plus the experience side of that as Good well. Point. Big day, so the Uchtaron is here as well. Brian like then in those little huddles and are you taking the, are, do you take in what the manager say last moment? I don't think you take in a lot of it to be honest with you Joanne you're, you're, you're more focused on yourself and what you want to get out of yourself but I will say one thing about him his message doesn't say change much I know in the media you know that as well <laughs> it's very much the same thing but he's an incredible communicator and an incredible motivator and the lads listen to him they have the height of respect for him so I think if you do those key things they'll know as I said the manager's roles are done. Brian is stood back now, Liam Sheedy stood back. You know, we've spoken here for about 20 minutes about matchups. That's all the work they have to get right. And I think, you know, it's over then to the players to get involved. But I think the players at this stage know and they just want to get it going. I, I hardly remember Gerald Nand before both our finals hey, saying anything. You're, you're lucky Gerald's not here beside you no, to say that to you. Honestly, but he didn't. Like, in 95 in particular, Sir Lyons was our most experienced player and Cyril had played for years for Clare and he was a sub and he handed it over to Cyril to start to say the last few words and you know for us we didn't expect that but obviously they had that lined up between them and it was powerful because you know I didn't expect Cyril at that stage and we really, you know just because it was different you tuned in completely to him. Was that Ger and Cyril had arranged that? Oh I'd say definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. Are there all these things to get the extra little yes. edge that can make a difference Donald? Yeah like we're talking fine margins here there's going to be something very fine is going to tip the balance here and in terms of us talking about getting the mindset right and stuff like that I'd agree with the lads. I think it's a very personal time, you know, yeah. before you go out in the field. Like, the most important thing for me was always, have you got your homework done? If you've got your homework done yeah. and you're prepared... Can you look in the mirror? Exactly. You're, you're looking forward to, to what's coming. If you, if you were in a position, I wouldn't like to be going out in that field today if in any way I'd let anything to, to, to chance. So I think it's, it's limited in terms of those last-minute speeches, what impact they can have even on that, the team. Even that bit there is lovely, Joanne. I, I just magic memories of that bit, you know. It was, I think it was, I, a few presidents gone by now since. I think it was Mary Robinson and my great pal Fergie Tuhi, you know. And I, I said, Fergie All-Star Tuhi, Mary. You know, and she, said, she stopped and she said, and are you an officer? <laughs> Not yet, Mary, he said. <laughs> you know, and so, they're on first, first time terms with well, the president. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, like, people didn't expect that we'd be as relaxed, that we'd be the nerve, the nervy team, but and, we, and we, were, we were chilled out completely, really. Brilliant story, but managing that is as important a skill as anything else. You know, I know we spoke about maybe, you know, the early days and the less baggage and stuff like that, but I definitely do think that the longer you go on and the more you experience the small things that you, you, you get to understand and get to understand even those nerves you mentioned about it earlier on, Henry, when they come, you know, you need to embrace those mm. and enjoy yeah. it. And yeah. that's Absolutely. a perfect state of mind that you were in that, in, in that situation. Even Dan scored four me. points. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Derek McGrath was on with us on uh, Radio 1 yesterday and he was saying, I know we're talking about TJ, we're talking about Shamie and Noel McGrath, but it's the workhorses who are going to have the big influence today, the likes of your Dan McCormick there and your Niall O'Mara in the middle of the field. Yeah, when well, you think back to last year, like uh, Dan Morrissey being forward, we hadn't spoken about him in the lead-up to it. That's it's the bolter. That's your Michael Breen, your John Donnelly. You know, it's someone like that that's going to come out of the pack. And it's always been the way. You know, and, and that's what you're looking for. And, and it's those people who come under the radar, who are very composed, and just want to go out and express themselves at this, this, this shape. That's what you need. Uh, Who worth mentioning there, Henry, when you're talking about those type of players, man or man? Yeah, uh, like, oh no. Like, there, there is a chance that at the end of today's game, if we are talking about yeah. that type of attritional game, yes. where Kilkenny could potentially get the edge, like, there's no better player in that scenario in the game. So, it is a factor that he is missing from today. Did play. they not overcome that with their comeback against Wexford, though? Yeah, but, well, you'd say overall, like, Kilkenny have more momentum having beaten Cork and Limerick and take up really only the 20 minutes against Wexford. But that might just be enough and maybe Kilkenny have used up a lot of 
But it, it, it was a different game. Wexford is a different game. Work for the shot passing, tr playing through their lines. This is more attritional. This is the ferocious. You look at Kenny tearing into Limerick in the early semi final, and that's where you need your Bonner Mars. That's, that's going to be the key one for me. Can that half forward line? Replace Bonner. Yeah. That challenge, that challenge is there for the tip team, and you must say it has been kind of questioned. And when someone does question your fighting ability, there's something almost innate that's inside you that you must stand up and, and respond. And yeah. Liam Sheedy did mention that when we heard from him a little bit earlier. Let's go with predict predictions. Well, my, one, my one is an easy one. I, think, okay. I just think <laughs> we, we we have that little bit more. I think since that half time in. Uh, in the Cork game, and I know from talking to the lads, they're building and building, and I think we're just going to see a performance just by a couple of pints over Tipperary. He just doesn't like those parades, really, doesn't TJ? Um, <laughs> no. Who are you going with, Anthony? I always loved the parade, uh, Jen, because no one got too far off you on the parade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, impossible to split in loads of ways. I just couldn't come up with a head up. And uh, I just gone for tip. I, I just think maybe there's a little bit more freshness. They were very good early in the year, had a dip, and they might be coming back at the right time. And the Cork man with the deciding vote. I think there's more match winners in the Tipperary forward line, and I'm expecting to see them answer those questions that have been asked over their character. If they can get both of those today, it's going to be a Tipperary win. OK, commentary Oscar is available on RT News now, but on this 2019 All-Ireland Senior Hurling Champion Final, it's time for us to rejoin our team here, Michael and Marty. Thank you very much, Joanne. This is Croke Park on All-Ireland Hurling Final Day, and what a magnificent vista lights up our eyes on your TV screen. A massive crowd of 82,300 are watching, waiting, buzzing with sheer excitement for what is the 28th Championship Clash between these close neighbours and greatest of rivals. It's a rivalry that first began on October 27th, 1887, on a Thursday afternoon. Yes, believe it or not, a Thursday afternoon in Erlingford, when Tipperary hurlers dared to cross the county line and provincial border into Leinster to play Kilkenny in an All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. Kilkenny failed to score that day, no goals, no points, as Tipperary won easily. And here, 132 years later, the intense rivalry continues as their descendants from the blue and gold of Tipperary and the black and amber of Kilkenny march behind the Artane band. And everywhere you look, Hogan stand, Cusick stand, Davin end, Hill 16 is full. Today, we have a global audience with viewers across all the continents, from the United States of America to Australia, New Zealand, from Europe to Asia, from Africa to Russia, and I'm sure from Porto to Castlecomer as well. On behalf of RT Sport and the Sunday game, may I welcome you, no matter where you are. Michael Dyckner is with me on commentary today. Michael, you played in All-Ireland Finals. We are so excited as observers. What's going through the Tipperary and Kilkenny players' minds right now? Uh, you just can't wait for the start, Marty. Um, I think every player... You're there's something wrong with you if you're not nervous. An odd player wouldn't, but most players would be very nervous. But they're trying to soak in the atmosphere, and you're just waiting to get your first touch of the ball. Maybe the first hit, get in the shoulder, win the ball, settle yourself into the game. And that's all they're thinking. They're concentrating on their own performance and their own job. When we remember June 30th, both of these teams lost their provincial finals to Limerick and Wexford. But 49 days later, it's Tipperary and Kilkenny that's here with us and not the Munster and Leinster champions. That's a story in itself. No, it is, and I suppose, look, with the new round robin, that's the way it is. It's all about peaking for the knockout, for the knockout games, and, uh, you know, Kilkenny blew Limerick away early on. Limerick had their chances, but their start was phenomenal, and the Wexford Tipperary game was just a seesaw game. Uh, Wexford looked to be pulling away a couple of times, but Tip stuck in there, and I think they've learned so much from that game. And their four, you mentioned their subs bench earlier on, all the young lads. Ford, Ford and Commander scored a point the last day, so um, I think that's going to really help them. Well, between the Kilkenny Cats and the Premier County, Tipperary won 63 All Ireland titles. Kilkenny on 36, Tipperary slightly behind on 27. They're number one and number three on the Roll of Honour with Cork in between. Who will win today as we pause? For our national anthem, a Ron of Ian. Right now, there's a minute silence for John Coffey, All Ireland medalist from 1945, from the Boher Lahan to Alla Club. He was the oldest All Ireland medalist. He was 102. Also for Billy Purcell from the Fenians Club, won All Ireland medals in 82 and 83 with Kilkenny. For Billy Ryan O'Toole, Sean Tracy's club, he took ill and died a Tipperary semi-final win over Wexford. And also for Jack Downey and Nicky Cooney of Clonmel Oak and Boris League, respectively. We pass on our deepest sympathies to all their families on behalf of everybody in RT Sport and indeed the GA world. Massive round of applause 
May they rest in peace. We just did the other one. And it's a card to our own Avian, our custom doing the Panakua or our Dian, who is still running our island. The anthem will also be signed by Samuel Dunn, conducted by Darren Byrne. It's August 18, 2019. It's 3.30 on a Sunday afternoon. The referee is 42-year-old James Owens from the Ascomore Can Rush Club in County Wexford. It's his third All-Ireland final. It's Kilkenny versus Tipperary. The Cats against the Premier. Black and amber, blue and gold. The All-Ireland hurling final 2019 is up and running. Tipperary won the toss, playing from left to right. Sunshine right now, rain threatened and an epic encounter between the neighbours. Killian Buckley laying it off. Farris, Connor Brown, referee blows his whistle. It's the first three in the All-Ireland final. Yeah, good burst, children. I'm just looking. Ronan Maher has gone in full-back on Colin Fenley. Brendan Maher gone in centre-back uh, on TJ Reid. I think maybe those switches were expected. You know, they're going to be huge today. Ronan Maher and Colin Fenley, Hugh Lawler the other end of the field. Uh, looking at Shane McCallan, he's actually gone right corner forward and Joey Holden there as well. So, look, you're going to have a few switches and changes early on before it settles down. TJ Reid in his 60th championship match. 31-year-old. From Ballyhale Shamrocks. Captain of Kilkenny. And he leads by example. Yeah, lovely free for a free taker, you know, in front of the goals, 40 yards out, he was never going to miss. A nice one to settle him in. And... Uh, First puck out of the afternoon for Brian Hogan. 30 years ago today, his dad, Ken, played against Antrim in the All-Ireland Hurling Final. 1989, TJ Reid, between the 45 and 65 metre line, looking around for a little bit of support, lays it off swiftly. Hugh Lawler, good work by Paddy Deegan, looking around, goes for the diagonal option as he saw the run by this man, Big Walter. Walter Walsh bearing down on goal, past the 20, laying it off. Here's a chance. A little bit of a fresh air, didn't connect. And that is an opportunity for Kilkenny. The referee's whistle is blown. But Kilkenny have settled early in Crook Park. Yeah. What a catch. Brilliant ball by Paddy Deegan. He saw the, saw the yeah, look at Walter Walsh straight through and Colin Finley. Brilliant hook there. Um, it was Ronan Maher with a brilliant hook and Colin Finley. The goal was on and James Owens had a great advantage there as well in the build-up. TJ Reid with five goals and 72 points coming into this All Ireland final. 54 frees, two penalties, 665s on the sideline. And already he's notched up two points in the All Ireland final. Well, he has, Marty, but he, already he's worked great. But here's, here's Walter Walsh again. He makes a great catch. Uh, one and one there with John McGrath. How he caught, he was back there into Colin Fenley. And it was John McGrath actually. Look at that for a hook by John McGrath. It was crucial. Back from corner forward, brilliant play by McGrath. Long ball up towards the Tipperary attack. Jason Ford sending it across field towards John O'Dwyer. Quick hands, just laying it off for his Michael Green. That's dropping inside the post and it's over the bar. Michael Green. What a brilliant score. Yeah, lovely little flick there by Bubbles to uh, Jason Ford, a great diagonal ball, the rain spilling down. And Michael Breen is that type of player. If he settles into the game early, he can score four or five and play on a good day. Made his debut against uh, Limerick four years ago and scored a cracking goal, I recall. 
Great catch for Imar. Was hooked on his delivery, picked up by Paddy Deegan. Laying it back. Torig Walsh. Kilkenny go back into the attack again. Battle for possession, coming through as TJ Reid. Stopped on this occasion. Kyle Barrett comes charging out, stopped in his tracks. Lays it off. Paddy Marr is there, stumbling but getting there. Ronan Marr, the brother, is also available. Ball is bubbling all over the place. Here comes Noel McGrath, vice captain of this Tipperary team, looking around to see who exactly is available. And it is pouring rain at the moment, making it difficult. Here comes Ronan Marr, scored nine points in the championship journey, and that is gone just to the wrong side of the post some wide. Quick puck out from Owen Murphy. Saw the man available, John Donnelly. In the centre, it's Paddy Deegan, or Lachlan Gales. Paddy on the run. Paddy on a scoring spree, but not on this occasion. Ball is wide. And Marty, you can see, you know, in club level, you wouldn't see this, the quick puckouts, because the refs are trying to do everything. But quick puck out there, we saw the last day with Wexford as well, isolating the man on the sideline, and great ball by Murphy. Paddy Deegan will be disappointed that he didn't put that one over. Difficult afternoon is going to be for the goalkeepers, an anxious Liam Sheedy. Tuck out, dropping down into the Kilkenny half of the field. Picked up on this occasion by Conor Fogarty. Leaves it off. Paris John Donnelly. Ball slipped out of his grasp. Noel McGrath, hockey style. Getting it in just a little bit. Paris John, uh, John McGrath. And that is a free. And the referee spotted it. Let's see what happened here. As he stepped out over the line, in fact, and it's going to be a silent ball. Yeah, Kilkenny dominating possession, Marty. You know, every puck out dropped down. Uh, Conor Fogel, he won a few balls at Parik Walsh and Pip struggling to win possession in the half hour line, which is a worry for them. If that starts, uh, it's never a good sign for them. Conor Fogel, he took the sideline ball, comes fast, Noel McGrath, sending it fast and direct into the full forward line. Kenny a little bit hesitant on the execution of the clearance, but uh, this is much better. As Connor Brown sweeps down into the Tipperary half of the field. Nicely picked up by Colin Fennelly. Lays it off, fires Richie Hogan. And Hogan hits it sweetly inside the post and over the bar. A uh, blistering start to this All-Ireland yeah, final. Con Connor Brown doing very well in the middle field. Lovely ball into Fennelly and he's... Have flicked it to Richie Hogan. Maybe he was he was gone inside. He could have flicked it back over the top. But you know, players like to settle into a match. Richie Hogan, as we know, a brilliant player, and uh, has been taken off in the last couple of matches. So he's going to be looking to make a big impact early. Brian Hogan going in short for his Barry Heffernan from the Nina Aero Club. But the pass is given away to T.J. Reid. Heffernan fouling before T.J. Reid could even pass the slipper, and the referee. Correct call. And that's a pure sign of nerves from Barry Heffern. You know, he's playing his first final, never looked up, and he had to go back and foul him. Then he had no option. TJ was heading in on the goals. Possibly got it. Did he get away with the yellow or did he get the yellow? The book was out, but I don't know if he got the yellow card. He'd be lucky. It's a soft free to give away, particularly when Tipperary had the possession. Earlier of the year, 2015, TJ Reid. Taps that over with ease. Three points for TJ Reid. Brian Cody reasonably pleased with the start. Pictures tell the story. We had sunshine about a half an hour ago, now this is horrendous rain. Seamus Kennedy delivering a diagonal ball. Jamie Callan, oh, beautifully flicked up. It's still there for the captain. Bearing down a goal inside the large rectangle. The referee, James Owens, has his arm up. What is the decision? He's giving a free. Looks like it's going to be a free outside the large rectangle. I don't think he's going to give a penalty, Michael. Yeah, the foul is outside here, he's saying. Just watch it there. Foul happened outside. I thought he was in the square. I thought he was inside. Um, 
The ref had to call it there on the spot. Brilliant flick by Callan on the build-up to it. Beautiful. Unbelievable flick. Oh, look at the rain. It's absolutely spilling down now. Um, that'll be a big call. We'll have a look at it again after. But I just thought he had one leg inside and he was fouled inside the square. Jason Ford with his first point. First free opportunity. Here we are again now. Here's Callan. He's inside. That's a penalty. That looks like a penalty when you look at the replay, but James Owen's decision was uh, quite clear. He was outside. Or did he give the free for the earlier? Foul outside, says the referee. The ball comes back out for his Dan McCormack. Available is Niall O'Mara. Floating one in again. Aiming for Jamie Callan. Or indeed, John McGrath. Coming forward is Joey Holden. Pass goes astray. Slippery ball, difficult conditions. Hugh Lawler. Over for his Killian Buckley, quick hands again. Coming forward is John Donnelly, deep inside his own half of the field, aiming for Walter Watch. Stopped on this occasion as Tipperary go forward. It's Seamus Kennedy laying it off for his Dan McCormick. Pulls the brakes and gives it back. Kyle Barrett, little shimmy, nice play by the corner back. Drops it into the Kilkenny half of the field. The Kilkenny are there in numbers. Look Plenty of time for Paul Murphy to deliver a ball. A load of room in front of Callum Fenley. High ball into him. Ronan Maher attacks the ball. Brian Hogan has come off his line. Callum Fenley has no hurley. Slips out of the grasp of the goalkeeper. But the Tipperary, number one, does rather well. Ball comes out for Seamus Kennedy. Kennedy from Clan Mail Commercials. Gives it up. Coming across is Porig Walsh. That's good Kenny. Under a bit of pressure, Paul Murphy flicking it back to his goalkeeper. Owen Murphy, no relation, laying it off. Paris Connor Fogarty, teacher down in Callan, aiming for Richie Hogan. Comes back again, good work on this occasion. Bursting forward is Boric Barr, and that's going to be a free for Tipperary. Yeah, the conditions might dictate now, it's absolutely spilling down out of the heavens. Uh, the wet ball, and you know, the short passing game is going to come under pressure here because of the conditions. Joey Holden anticipating that the free was going to be taken quickly. Ball along the surface is going to be difficult. Good work by John Bubbles on the wire. Knocked away. Stalemate in the middle of the field. Connor Brown scooping it up. One of Fitzgibbon Cup with UCC earlier. Richie Hogan always has the time. Sending this in towards Colin Finley and company. Finley gets a little touch. Coming forward is TJ Reid. He has it in his paw. Had it momentarily. Ball breaks free again. It's all a bit of a mad scramble. But it's exciting to watch. TJ Reid coming back. Man available is this man. It's Walter Walsh cutting inside. Inside the large rectangle. He can't turn and the referee has given a, a free air. The drama in the opening 11 and a half minutes of this All-Ireland final. It's kind of creating plenty of space. They've had a couple of half goal chances. Here's Walter Walsh. He's stood up there. There's a pull in the jersey uh, from Ron Maher. We believe that the referee has given the free for holding the hurling. And this is going to be another simple tap over score for TJ Reid. And Marty, I think Tip are going to be happy enough. You know, they haven't started hurling. Kilkenny have had a couple of goal chances. Um, they're dominating possession, and yet Tip will find themselves maybe three points down now. Not too bad considering the start of had. Thirty-one-year-old from Ballyhale takes his point. Four points for TJ Reid. Richie Hogan, the other point scorer. Brian Cody. Every bit of shelter required. Yes, Brian Hogan goes for distance. John Donnelly. Flicking it back, God chasing after this Niall O'Mara. Difficult conditions, I emphasize, for the players of Tipperary and Kilkenny. Yeah, well, John Donnelly did very well initially. That's what he does. They drop back himself and Walter Walsh for the puckouts and pick up so many breaks. And Niall O'Mara put him under pressure there and got his body in between himself and Parik Walsh and was fouled. Well, believe it or not, we now have glorious sunshine in Dublin. It's that kind of a day. Jason Ford actually made his championship debut against Kilkenny six years ago. 
Now a teacher in the vocational school in Nina. Has been so consistent in this championship journey. Scoring two goals and 57 points to the final. That's his second today. That is some rivalry, Marty. I was just reading during the week. Brendan Maher, it's his seventh all Ireland final today, including the replays, and they've all been against Kilkenny, which is some stat, you know. So it just shows you they're never too far away, these two counties. Tuck out from Owen Murphy. John Johnley goes up for it. Noel McGrath sweeps it back inside his own 20 metre line. Nice little touch. Barry Heffernan. Now at number three. We've been used to see him at number five and number seven for the blue and gold. John O'Dwyer. Killing all. Sweeping it across. Oh, great hands. Good hands indeed. There's an opportunity here. Good combination. As that goes to the wrong side of the post off the stick of Seamus Kennedy, but a fine catch here by Michael Breen. Yeah, Michael Breen did very well. The problem with Seamus Kennedy was the shooter. You know, you need to get the ball into Noel McGrath, John McGrath, Callan, who can finish from there. Puck out dropping just inside the temporary 45-minute line. TJ Reid is in there, so too is Michael Breen. Colin Finlay comes in search of possession. Lays it off as Killian Buckley. Dropping this one in. And Brian Hogan will be happy to see it go out over the end line. And Kenny's second wide of the match. Uh, Killian Buckley has missed a lot of the season, you know, through injury and uh, big game for him today. Big, big call by Brian Cody to start him. Ronan Mars long delivery aimed at Jason Ford. Joey Holden with him. Good block down. Comes to John Donnelly. TJ Reid takes responsibility. Nice little pull of the brakes. Little one two with Killian Buckley. Hit a fair shoulder. Three temporary Premier lads chasing after him. Good Kenny building slowly. Donnelly again is working hard. He's been impressive in the early stages. Diagonal ball was aimed at Richie Hogan. Richie is fouled. Dead straight in front of the post. Just outside the 45 metre line. Yeah, he's, a blow, he's after getting it across those. Wild watch Carl Barr comes in very high there. Uh, very, very lucky again to escape a yellow card. He came in, that was reckless. Just watch it there, straight into the into the face guard. And that was slow, patient build up by Kilkenny. TJ Reid so involved again with two or three passes, and uh, Hogan draws the foul. Richie Hogan, this is his 49th championship appearance and his 10th All-Ireland final. Hurler of the year 2014. And a great player. He has to go out now. The blood sub rules so. That substitution required as uh, Billy Ryan comes on momentarily for Richie Hogan. Meanwhile, TJ Reid He's aiming to score his fifth point of the game. All of them from freeze. Yeah, Kilkenny one point from play, Richie Hogan and Michael Breen, the only scorer from tip from play with two frees and four. None of the forward, it's only one of the 12 forwards who scored from play. Strange game so far. Again, Brian Hogan goes short. First call, Barrett, Seamus Kennedy. Poor pass. Not for the first time we've seen it. Opportunity for Adrian Mullen. Gives it back first, Walter Walsh. Little shimmy to the right. Thought about going for the point. Now he's in a better angle, but he miscues. Disappointment for a big Walter. Yeah, tip in trouble with their puck out strategy. Now, the short ones aren't working. Kilkenny are closing them down very quickly. The puck it long, they're not winning them. Uh, so they're going to have to find some way. The Kilkenny forward is tackling very hard. Look at Barry Heffernan with no option here again. That's a dangerous ball out to, to Mar, well controlled. Tony Mar. 30 years of age from Thurlis Sarsfields, scooping it forward. To Shami Callan, but TJ Reid is back there, helping out his defence. It's a good ball up for his John Donnelly. Hit it in high, it's a waste in some ways, and there goes Brian Hogan. We saw there he is. Wexford, do you remember Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Hawkeye was called in, but not today. No Hawkeye call today, six foot five. I believe that Hawkeye are checking it out. We continue on with the play. Back first, Paddy Deegan scoops it up high. And the referee has blown the whistle because Hawkeye have contacted James Owens and they're going to consult Hawkeye 
but I think the information is that John Donnelly's shot went over the bar. Well, they must have because they wouldn't contact him otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Let's double check. Hawkeye. It's a tall. Amazing. Like Second like time. That's struck twice. That's bizarre to say the least. Brilliant take by Hogan. Just shows you the importance of this technology. If this all earned is one by a point, that's how crucial it is. Hogan goes for distance. Down to Shamey Callan. Picked up by Paul Murphy from Danesport. Pulled up. Superbly by Killian Buckley. Oh, he's so brave. Good work by Ronan Ma. Hits the shoulder. And the block. And the hooking. And it's number 31. It's Richie. Scooping the ball inside. And that is gone wide. For Kilkenny, all the qualities we expect from Kilkenny. The hooking, the blocking, the work rate. It is here. It is here. A great start by them. Killian Buckley has said a brilliant bravery. TJ on the ball, Richie Hogan, all the key men. And Tip was, I'm saying it a couple of times, struggling to win these puckouts. Brian Hogan. Puck out again, aiming for Niall O'Mara. But Kilkenny's half back line is rock solid. Connor Fogarty charging out. Passion. He wants this All-Ireland medal. Kenny leading by four points. Almost 20 minutes gone in the first half. And right now, Michael Dagnan, you'd have to say Kenny looked to be the better team. Well, by far the better team. The scoreline, as I said, they could have had a goal, maybe two goals. Um, they seem to find these players all the time. Conor Brown here, what a start he's had in the game. You know, tough, honest, uh, winning all those breaking balls and Tipperary are looking out there looking for leaders and they're half forward in the middle of the field now to get on the ball and win some possession. They've been starved of, of any ball at the moment. TJ Reach. Seven All Ireland medals already won. Driving this in. And the umpire will go for the white flag. Six out of six. Here's John Donnelly. Now, this is the one. And watch the athleticism of Hogan here. He goes, fierce height, and catches it behind the bar. Great catch, but great score by Donnelly, as it turns out. Thomas Down, where John Donnelly is from, will be well pleased. Oh, beautiful stick work by John Donnelly. TJ Reid. Cross towards Richie Hogan. Carl Barrett comes charging out. Fair and square. Walter Watch. Good work by Seamus Kennedy. Sticking to his job. Sticking to his task. And perhaps being a little bit over-enthusiastic after doing a good job. Sideline ball for TJ Reid. Brian Cody, 65 years of age, on the 12th of July last. Poor ball from TJ Reid. Barry Heffernan gives it to Paddy Mark. And Kenny are putting in the hard work. Mark lays it off. John McGuire backfires Paddy Mark again. Paddy Deegan chasing. Mark has to give it back to Kenny. Putting in the hard work, comes out first, Niall O'Mara. Turns and does it have the legs, does it have the accuracy? It's blocked down for a 65. And yeah, Tipper, they're looking for inspiration, you know, somewhere out there. They need somebody to step up. They're playing four across the half-forward line. They're poking the ball out. It's been broken down. Kilkenny are winning every breaking ball. And somebody has to start reading that from a Tipperary point of view. Kilkenny are given exactly what we expect, 100% commitment from everybody. Uh, the conditions have definitely had a bear and, you know, some bad wides that we wouldn't normally see. Hurls very, very slippy. You see the towels coming in the whole time into the players. Uh, so, subdued enough start. Kilkenny be delighted to be five ahead. It's a good lead. Normally in hurling, five points is very little. On a day like today, when it's not going to be high scoring by the looks of things, it's a big lead. Jason Ford going to take this 65. Silver Mines man has really been razor sharp all through this championship journey. 
on Aaron in his free taken. Great strike, very important score from Jason Ford. Owen Murphy, 29 years of age since the 6th of August. What a fantastic catch by Richie Hogan. Dole McGuire laying it off. Brendan Maher, captain of an All Ireland winning team a few years ago. Referee blows his whistle. And when Tipperary run at the Kilkenny defence, they find that rather difficult to deal with, Michael. Yeah, well, that was very, very clever play by Brendan Murray. He had nowhere to go. There was three Kilkenny players around him. And he just, just watched that for cute. He flicked it over, knew the tackle was going to come in. For, so he, he drew the free there. That's all his experience coming into play there. Good play by Brendan Maher. Young hurler of the year nine years ago. Twice an all-star. Now 30 years of age. As we look at Jason Ford. Well within his range. White flag raised again. If TJ Reid can do it at one end, Jason Ford can do it at the other. A few answer men here today as well. Owen Murphy aiming for Big Walter. But it's Paddy Maher that leaps up into the sky, lays it off. Farris, Seamus Kennedy. 50-50 ball, comes back, Jason Ford, laying the ball inside, good work here by Nilo Maher, he's never scored a goal, until now! Brilliant goal! What a smashing effort! The Kilroy and McDonough man rattles it into the back of the Kilkenny nets. That's a brilliant catch by Paddy Maher in the build-up, but look at Nilo Maher here, little flick, 1-2 there, beautiful ball, and watch the feet here, watch the footwork, he completely bamboozled, uh, Paddy Deegan and uh, Rasper into the corner there. What a goal! And that game badly needed this. Back out into the live action. It's Barry Heffernan laying it off as John McGrath. Giving it back to Big Brother. No. Shipping it into the corner. It's where Shamie Callanan is making a run. With him is Hugh Lawler. Callanan crosses it. It's a good ball. Jason Ford blocked away by Owen Murphy. But suddenly the momentum is swinging to Munster and to the Premier County of Tipperary. Yeah, look, I just said a couple of minutes ago, five points is a big lead today, it's gone. And we talked about leaders for Tip on the field. Toddy Maher stepped up with a brilliant catch there. Uh, the two McGraths there showing their class. And uh, Seamus Kennedy and Walter Watch, some great battles going on. But Tip right back in this now. That goal was badly needed. It's after livening up the whole crowd. 65. Second of the afternoon for Tipperary, going to be taken by Jason Ford. Four points to his credit so far, including the previous 65. Here he comes. He is such an easy stroke of the ball. And that's over the bar. Yeah, Marty's having a great season. He waited here, but here's the goal again, O'Mara. Look, but look at the low ball on a wet day. It, it bounced a long way out. And Owen, Mur Owen Murphy would probably be a little bit disappointed within under Hugh Lawler. Watch him. He steps out, hits the ground. No chance, really. A, a rasper on the ground. It skidded off the ground straight into the net. And let's be honest, Owen Murphy is the best goalkeeper in Ireland at the moment. Here comes Paddy Deegan. Trying to flick it back up into the hurling. Laying it back. Paris. Torig watch. Nicely picked up by John Donnelly. Referee correctly blows the whistle for an infringement. And I have to say, John Donnelly is playing well. Yeah, he's very good at reading the break. Very intelligent hurler, and he uses the ball really well. I think we'll, if you just watch here, he's just always watching the break. He's in around it all the time. Pulled down there by Seamus Kennedy. The ref's book is out again. No booking so far. You know, I think again that was. Cynical enough, he knew there was danger there and he, and he just got a little hand to him and dragged him down. Just on the edge of the D. Going for point, if a shot. 
follows through beautifully. Seven points. This is something I've noted during the year, Marty. In the first half against Tip seemed to give way an awful lot of frees. Even go back to the first game against Cork, Patrick Horgan scored eight in the first half alone. Um, whether it's just don't, they don't want to, they want to stop the momentum of the toes and attackers and in the second half they usually don't give away half as many. Sides are level for the second time. Killian Buckley laying it off quickly. Aiming for Colin Fennelly. Or Richie Hogan. He'll take Colin Fennelly. Oh. His shoulder still going forward. Colin Fennelly blocked out. Ronan Mara comes out. It's the passion and intensity of an All Ireland hurling final. John bubbles on the wire, dropping it in. Nobody really home. Paul Murphy sends it back into Tipperary territory. TJ Reid going up for it. Ball stuck. One back by Noel McGrath. Short little ball for us. John O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer has the time and the composure, and he really, knowing John O'Dwyer and the standard that he normally plays to, he'll be disappointed. He'll be disappointed. He, sometimes you can have an awful lot of time, too much time in the ball, he certainly had there. And here's the puck out coming again. No time for hanging about. Oh, fantastic catch. And can it follow through? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant play by John Donnelly. He's a student teacher in DCU. He's only 21 years of age. But right now, this first half, he's very impressive. Yeah, Bassavian, that's what we talk about in the Ireland finals. Players always that you're not expecting, like Niall O'Mara's got a goal, Donnelly with a couple of points. All they talk about TJ and Shane McCallan, they'll do their bit as well, but it's a team game and Donnelly's had a mighty start. John O'Dwyer. Paul Murphy, Gavitz. John McGuire comes in to challenge. Murphy gets his clearance in. Tipperary regained the possession. The crowd of the Davin End love it. And so too the Seamus Kennedy. Yeah, and he had a chance over here at this side of the field a few minutes ago. He missed it, but he had the confidence to come back up the field. Great athlete Kennedy, and that's a super score into the wind. A jewel star with his club Carmel Commercials. That's his first point in the championship. TJ Reid has the slither momentarily. Michael Breen is in there. Noel McGrath has arrived. Looking around, about to be challenged by Killian Buckley. The hook didn't quite work, it turned out to be a trip, and that's going to be a fray for the Lockmore Castellani man. Noel McGrath indicating, come on lads, spread it wide. And Don't be going down the middle. Only two inside in the full forward lane and two on two. Noel McGrath dropping it in. Ball breaks, kindly, for John McGrath, and that is over the bar. Just watch McGrath here again. We talk about hurling brains. Just watch it. He he knows it's going to break. He just backed away, picked it up, and then took the tackle to make a bit of room for himself. Good shoulder and over the bar. That's a very, very good score. Very clever hurling by McGrath. Man that made his debut against Cork in 2016. Won an All-Star. An All-Ireland minor football winner in 2011. Hurling 2012. And that's a hefty challenge. And the referee is walking across... That is related, perhaps, to a previous clash. Let's just watch it here. Richie Hogan, just a little bit high on Carl Barrett. Yeah, he came in to, he came in to hit him a shoulder, and Barrett, if you just watch Carl Barrett, he ducks out of the tackle. That's an elbow strength in the head. It all depends what the referee saw or what he's been told by the linesman here. Linesmen today are Johnny Murphy from Limerick and Paul Dwyer from Carlo. You can see there's a little bit of blood on Richie's nose from an earlier clash. Imagine he's going to give him a yellow card, by the way. That's what the body language would suggest anyway, Michael. He's double-checking that the right corner back... Well, you see, the, the, the trouble the referee has here, if he thinks it's a deliberate shoulder to the head, it's a red card. That's the rule. Um, so, you know... Let's see I'm, what the colour of the card will be, Michael. I'd be taking the conditions into account a little bit. Very slippy down there. He was coming in wholeheartedly, but... He's indicating it was a high challenge. And the referee is showing red. Richie Hogan cannot believe it. Kilkenny are incensed and Brian Cody as the Cats are reduced to 14 players after 33 minutes of the first half. Sensational development, heartbreaking 
for Richie Holgan, but it was high. It was high, but I, I think on a wet day like today, he didn't you know, deliberately go in to do him, and a yellow card to me would have done. Sideline ball. Ball had gone out over the line. Jamie Callan and Paddy Deegan getting involved. That was the incident. Well, as I said, if the ref thought it was deliberate, he had to send them off. That's the rule. We've seen a few lads getting away with it during the year. We've seen a few lads getting punished for it, so it's a little bit inconsistent. The reality is that any contact with the head is now going to be a red card. Well, we saw Rona Maher against Limerick going over the top into, into Peter Casey and he didn't get any card, so... Here comes Paddy Deegan. Going for distance, aiming for Colin Fennelly. He's underneath it. Coming forward, Adrian Muller. Referee says, says play on. I don't think he's blown his whistle. And now he's given a free to Kilkenny. The Kilkenny fans and supporters are a little bit incensed with that previous decision. They felt that Colin Fennelly was fouled here. They were waiting for the free to be given, but there was no free coming. Yeah, they got it eventually, and the rain's spilling down again, but you know, frees are hard, got James Old tried to let the game flow, and in conditions like this, you know, you're going to get you're going to get 50-50 calls, and that's what that's what I would have I would have felt on that. You know, maybe it's a red card under the rule, but in, on a day like today, um, I think you have to take the conditions into account. And this is going to level it up anyway. And we've seen we've talked about it many, many times. The 14 men generally find a way to beat the 15 men. I don't know what it is in sport. TJ Reid going for his eighth point of the match. This the level matters again for the fourth occasion. This is the collision with Adrian Mullen that was just previous. Yeah, he came down awkwardly. He's limping heavily there now, Adrian Mullen. Two minutes of additional time in this first half. Sunshine gone. Back to the heavy showers. Gone forward is Dan McCormack. Trying to sneak this inside the post, but it's gone wide. And that is Tipperary's fourth wide. And to be honest with you, Michael, was well within his range yeah, normally. Dan McCormick's striking is his weak link. You know, even when he got that ball, he should have burst on with it. He stalled straight away, didn't want to take the shot, and uh, no confidence in his strike and put it wide. Owen Murphy goes for that long ball. Barry Heffernan catching gracefully ahead of Walter Walsh, which is quite an achievement. Nipping in is Dan McCormick. Jamie Callan into his right, the referee blows his whistle. He's giving a free to Tipperary for the foul on Dan McCormack. This was the incident that was holding there, clearly, oh, by Joey clear Holden. Free, yeah. Clear free. Well, the talking point, no doubt, will be the sending off of Richie Hogan in the first half. Kilkenny reduced down to 14 players in the last three minutes. Disappointment for Richie Hogan. Talking point for everybody. You know, and he, he's going to be massively disappointed. He put so much into the game coming back from injuries. But, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be thinking there, why did I come charging in as well? You know, you have to take responsibility for your actions. And Barrett flicked back, but he was coming, flying to hit him a good dunt. They had clashed earlier on in the game. That was in the back of his head as well. He got the blood injury from the foul from Barrett. So, you know, that all plays in your mind. So he'd be saying, why didn't he just stay out of it? And I'd be still on the field. Tapped over the bar. Simple point for Noel McGrath. Getting his first point. Liam Sheedy encouraging, as always, from the sideline. Owen Murphy puts the ball out. The booing is coming from the Kilkenny supporters who feel that they've been numerically disadvantaged with that decision by the referee James Owens. For Liam Sheedy, he's encouraging his players. As they go into the break, James Owens heads towards the Muhammad Ali tunnel between the Davin and the Cusick. Because no doubt, any time there is somebody sent off, particularly in All Ireland final, it is very much a talking point. They've been level four times in the first half. A goal by Niall O'Mara, 25 minutes, the only goal of the first half. Half time, it's Kilkenny, 11 points. Tipperary, 1 9. Analysis right after the break.
Before this All-Ireland Hurling final, we talked about what you would do when things go wrong. Well, things have now gone for, wrong for Kilkenny because they've lost Richie Hogan to a red card, but they are only trailing Tipperary by a single point at the break, 1-9 to 11 points. Let's get straight to that because that could end up being crucial to this whole match, a red card for Richie Hogan. Yeah, so I, I know Richie well. He is not a good tackler. I would say that at the outset. And this wasn't a good tackle, Joanne. So, you know, I think Kenny were coming in a bit of pressure. Cottle Barrett's out in front of him. Now, the problem here is that Richie, you know, went with his arm a little bit. My initial reaction watching it live was that it wasn't. It was dangerous play, maybe a yellow card. I didn't think it was a red card. And I said, I think he was unlucky in the sense that his arm kind of strike Carl Barrett's I, helmet. I, I just think that, Henry, the last angle was the one for me. I wasn't well, this, sure. This one is not like good. That, but that, but that, that's Anthony, elbow to face, though. You, whatever you say about it, and he's coming at steam pace. And he did I, 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 I think that angle it does, you know, it's very dangerous play, right? Mm -hmm. But I think at the moment of time, the linesman is looking at, the referee is looking at, I think it's a harsh call, Anthony, being honest about it. But I, look, I did too till I saw I, the I, last I, angle, yeah, I have to say. Yeah. The rules are there for very dangerous play. That's that's a sin enough. It's a red card. It's elbow to, to head. That's why the rules. I wouldn't are there. say it was elbow. I wouldn't say it was elbow. I know. I know what you're saying. You're trying to say, but I don't think he went like that and hit him. But at the bit. start of the year, they made it very clear that any tackle on the head was going to result in a red card. And James Owens did go over and he consulted his linesman Johnny Murphy, and he said to him, "If it's a strike to the head, we've no choice." Yeah. Well. I don't think he struck him in the head. I think, you know, I think his arm struck him in the head. And I think this part of the arm, I'd have no obligations if it was this part. But I, look, that's me maybe being a bit biased. I think it was the speed about, yeah. and the power he was coming at. Now, it was very hard for him with the wet surface trying to change his feet as well. Yeah, well, give it, wasn't, that, it wasn't a good time. Just that fourth anyway. angle yeah. was yeah. just, for me, it was a severe one. And Barrett hit the deck very hard, I thought, you know. It was the first yeah. instinct watching it in general play and then we, we have the benefit of the replay outside. Well, we know Kilkenny had this great start, but the goals seem to make a big difference. And you turned around and said, this is a mad game. Well, I've said it for, for years and uh, Paddy Maher started it with a massive catch and a good ball upfield by Shemi Kennedy. And just a breaking ball. If they did more of this, I think Jason Ford just sucked him in and you've got to give massive credit to Nilo Maher. Though. He turned Conor Fogarty literally inside out, got onto his good, strong left-hand side and buried to the far corner. Great, great finish, I thought. Brilliant finish, Anthony. Like from a goalkeeping point of view, you might have thought that he'd actually come back across, especially like you said, on the, on the strong side, and really use the surface. So there's so much rain falling out there that a ball you'd actually think it nearly gathers speed when it hits off the ground, but it's really hard for the keeper to stop it because you can't be sure where it's going to go. It was a fantastic finish. And for any of viewers, I think the conditions have been atrocious out there, you know. So and Kilkenny were well on top to one for that first 20 minutes. To be fair to Limerick, uh, sorry, to Tipperary, they moved Porrick Maher across from Walter, Maher, Walter Welch. That has made a bit of a difference. Brendan Maher and Porrick Maher drove up the field just before that. They needed the leaders to stand up. They won two frees, mm -hmm. and then Porrick Maher had a great catch for that goal. Now, we did expect it to be finally poison heading into the second half. Tipperary are a point and a man up. We'll have the second half coming up after a break and our competition. We've teamed up with Aer Lingus, Ireland's only four-star airline, now flying to 14 North America destinations to give you the chance to win a five-night holiday to New York. I'm here in Gaelic Park, New York. Let's take a look around the Big Apple. Go. First stop, Central Park. Giddy up. Sometimes you even forget you're in New York, but then... Come on! You might even meet some GA fans. You and a friend will be treated to a five-night stay in Fitzpatrick's Hotel in Manhattan, close to all the attractions. You'll need some dollars to do some shopping. So for your chance to win a five-night holiday to New York at $5,000 spending money, just answer this. Which of these is a much-loved shopping district in New York? Bond Street, Grafton Street, or Fifth Avenue? To enter, call 15 17 71 71 82 or text the word GAME, followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost two euro and three cents. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, September 16th. Full details are on rt.ie forward slash competitions, and the lucky winner will also be revealed. Plenty of special guests to look back on another intriguing season of Championship Hurling and as well as the All-Ireland Final. That's with Des tonight from half past nine. So 1-9 to 11 points to Tipperary at half time. We have heard so much about Kilkenny's work rate 
What did you make of it in the first half and what else did they bring to the game? Well, Graham McCaughey was sitting out here from Limerick and he said the exact same thing about there's a very similar first 20 minute pattern to the Kilkenny game. And here is Yule Lawler coming up the field, this is very early doors. John McGrath actually started wing forward. He ends up marking Walter Welch wing back. Tipper a little bit all over the place, but it was Kilkenny's work rate. Great chance for Colin Fenley here. And John McGrath, to be fair, got back and got a block, you know, so they'll be talking about that one if they happen to win it. But here's Kilkenny again, TJ using the ball very well. Colin Fenley throwing it around. John Donnelly again had a big impact on the game. Just the precision of them, just working the ball through the lines, and here they win a free. And TJ obviously has got eight points from frees. Yeah, like you know, and a feature of it, John, is how deep TJ has been willing to come. Obviously, maybe not wanting to engage so much with Brendan Maher. And Brendan's a bit of a quandary whether he comes or not. But if TJ picks up ball anywhere in the field, as we've seen here, you now someone might get Brian Hogan to get to block those balls rather than catching them going over the bar. <laughs> this uh, is, that's another one. And we're we're waiting for it. We were talking about a bolter. John Donnelly has had a massive impact for Kenny, to be fair. Two points from play. We've only had three scores in the first half. TJ's got eight frees. Richie Hogan got a point from play and John Donnelly's gone. That's a bit of a concern for Kilkenny now with only five forwards. And when it was 8-3, it actually could have been about 11-3. Like Walter had an awful wide, Paddy yeah. Deegan had an awful Colin wide. Could goal, Colin yeah. could have got it. Like, Tip were hanging in at that yeah. stage. To support what the boys are saying there, it was like, after 21 minutes, uh, Tipperary had turned over 72% of their possession. Yeah. Like, that tells its own story. Yeah. That's a huge, yeah. a huge, huge number. And the goal came in the 25th minute. It was vital in terms of turning the tide. How do Tipperary use the extra man in this second half? Because we saw how it worked against Wexford in the semi-final. Yeah, for me, it's Barry Heffernan. You get it to Barry Heffernan. He plays midfield, he plays half-back. You try and get him in because I, I, he wasn't so comfortable early in the game in the corner. I think if you could get Barry Heffernan into that advanced position, we yeah. saw him coming up the field against Wexford, popping passes. You know, that's 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 what we're going to need to do. It, it is using the ball a lot better, I think. And, and Tipperary will have to try and do that. Okay, and don't forget that there is Irish language commentary in RT News now, but it's back to Michael and Marty. Thank you very much, Joanne. Welcome back to the second half. Well, it's a bizarre sort of a day in terms of the climate. We've had sunshine. Heavy, heavy rain. So much so we now have the floodlights on in Croke Park for this All-Ireland Hurling Final. And if you think people have left at the lower tier of the Cusick stand, they haven't. They've just gone for a bit of shelter. Meanwhile, Brian Cody with James McGarry and Derek Lane. We've seen it in the past, as Michael mentioned in the first half commentary. Teams down to 14 players, how they respond. Tipperary did it themselves in the All-Ireland semi-final. Can, can Kilkenny do it in this one? TJ Reid, eight first half points. All of them freeze. Follows through as always. That's his ninth. Yeah, and if Tipper are going to win this, they're going to have to improve their discipline. That's nine frees. Like, can anybody score three from play? John Donnelly again, that man we talked about in the first half, won that free brilliantly. Got in on the breaking ball and forced the free. And it looks like um, Kyle Barrett's going to be the loose man. He's uh, sitting in front of the full backer. Five times they've now been level. But Tipperary have an extra man. Conor Fogarty driving it into Kilkenny territory. Coming across is Carl Barrett. Holy Cross, Bally Cahillman. John O'Dwyer laying it back, picked up by Porrick Walsh into the space. Carl Barrett has gone back there. Here comes Colin Fennelly. Barry Hefferton. Gives it back to his keeper, Brian Hogan. Potimar. Driving it in again into Kilkenny territory. Lovely little flick up by Jason Ford. Gives it inside to John McGrath. Half blocked. Here comes Sherry Callaghan. Goal for Tipperary. A goal in every single game. This is his eighth goal of the championship. Scoring a remarkable, remarkable 7-16 on the way. Now it's 8-16. Scoreless in the first half. He gets the vital touch. Yeah, there's a brilliant control by John McGrath coming through here. Got the shot away, blocked brilliantly by Murphy. But Callan on hand, brave, slid in there. And what a record um, this year he's had. A goal in every championship, Mar Marty, as you say. And that could be a huge, huge score in the context of this uh, second half. Start of the second half is normally the period that Kilkenny come tearing out, particularly we saw in the All-Ireland semi-final against Limerick. The pressure is on. Good ball inside from Killian Buckley. Tipperary, Blue and Gold are back there. Polly Maher again, laying it off. Hefty shoulder. And Noel McGrath, but it's the Kilkenny man that hits the deck. McGrath 
giving it in, but it's a poor pass. Connor Fogarty is in there. Two against one. Good ball for John O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer goes for the diagonal ball. Over towards the captain from Dominic, Shamie Callanan. Goal just a few moments ago. That's a goal and a point. Showing tremendous leadership, Shamie Callanan. Well, that's a great ball by Bubbles. Now. He saw the, there was a couple of short passes on, but he saw the room in front of, of Callanan and he sprayed a 70 yard pass straight in front of him and made it easy for him. And it, you know, tip, really making good use of this extra man in the, at the start of the second half. Attacking the slitter is Brendan Maher. From Boris Ali. Sending it down to Shami Callanan. Jason Ford is arriving. Nice rob by Paul Murphy. Drives it into the centre towards Killian Buckley. Trying to get past the initial challenge. Carl Barrett is back there in front of Colin Fennelly. The reality is Kilkenny are going to have to run at the Tipperary defence because the long ball is not going to work. John O'Dwyer was stumbling into this Cusick stand and yet managed to score a magnificent point. That's Beautiful the sort, balance. That's the sort of ability this Tipperary forward line have. You know, we've just seen it in the last few minutes. Callan, uh, John McGrath with his touches, and then uh, Bubbles then with that brilliant point on the move. Coming on is Billy Ryan, and the player that's going off is Adrian Muller. Yeah, he got a bad knock just before half time, and Billy Ryan's pace, you know, badly needed, I think. Now, this can any forward line, as you say, Martin, we're going to have to run at tip because Barrett's sitting back there and winning loads of ball. And every ball is like a magnet he's attracting it at the moment because he is that extra man Joey Holden captain of the Kilkenny team that won the All-Ireland in 2015 he's on his own Paddy Deegan arrives from Kilkenny City from O'Loughlin Gales goes again for Colin Fennelly knocked away Kilkenny just might create something here back outside first Walter Walsh and that's gone over the bar. That wasn't that far away. But that was brilliant play by Joey Holden back in the cornerback position. He was under unbelievable pressure. You see Walter just going there. He kept it maybe just around the crossbar. He was heading, heading for the crossbar, but it went over the bar. Great play by Holden back in the corner. And Paddy Deegan with a good, long first-time ball. Walter Walsh's first point in this All-Ireland final. Sideline ball. Brian Cody. This would be his greatest achievement because he's building a, a new side, but they're numerically disadvantaged. Sideline ball is poorly taken. John Donnelly had a fine first half. Aiming for Colin Fennelly. Knocked away. Ronan Mark. Good combination play by Seamus Kennedy. Plays with St Mary's and Carmel and the Hurling. The commercials are the football brotherhood. But Kennedy is a dual star, whether it's Gaelic football or Hurling. Well, that's a brilliant score. John McGrath picks him up off the shoulder and Kennedy's look, at his ease from the middle of the field. That's his second uh, fantastic point so far in the game. Tuck out his end at Walter Walsh. Little flick back by Noel McGrath. Little shimmy by Barry Heffernan. Diagonal ball is in for Jamie Callanan. Hugh Laura with it. Callanan trying to get an angle. Sending a ball in. Brilliant. John Edouard. Bubbles is his name. Scoring is his game. Held scoreless in the first half. The vision of the captain saw that John Edouard was unmarked here. Nobody home for Kilkenny. And he stroked it off. Yeah, look at the numerical advantage really tell him. When you're playing a team with the class of tips forwards and they're getting that room in front of Callan, it's just brilliant to watch the, the way he, he spread that ball across. He's totally selfless. He could have went for his own score. And here he is onto it. Hugh Lawler, very inexperienced at this level. And here's Callan again on the ball. And Hugh Lawler has lost his hurley. Seamus Callan almost got clean possession. Connor Fogarty arrived to lay it off first. Killian Buckley. Crossfield. Knocked away. Dan McCormick lays it back first. Noel McGrath. Cut out on this occasion by Conor Fogarty. Over first, Paddy Deegan. 
They're aiming again for Colin Finley. Finley is underneath it. Carl Barrett is there, sweeping up. I just don't think, Michael, that long ball is going to work. No, Ronan Mark, very, very strong in the air. You know, I thought he'd be a big loss to the half back then, but he's doing a great job back there on Colin Finley so far. Hugh Lawler to John Donnelly. Scored two points in the first half. He's going for a third. Brian Hogan cleverly this time uses his Hurley to bat it down. Fares the third of Sarsfield's cornerback, Ronan Mark. Paddy Deegan gets a touch. Then gathers it cleanly. Ball to hand to, for John Donnelly. To Conor Fogarty. TJ Reid is the target. Somehow he got it. Can they create something out of this? Unequivocally, the answer is yes. It's his first point from play and his tenth overall. Yeah, and the only thing you're going to be sure is that Kenny will not give up. And that, you know, great take there by TJ Reid. But here's Callan. Just looking to look up here. Brilliant ball. Brilliant first touch. And fantastic finish by John O'Dwyer. He has the wrists and the hands and makes it, makes it look so easy. Brian Hogan's puck out. All the way down, Ferris John McGrath. And that is sailing spectacularly between the posts and over the bar. Yeah, and he's had a quiet enough year, but his standards sent off in the semi final. But the first touch there and the quick feet, he's not the fastest uh, runner, but the quickness of his feet to make room for himself there and flick it over the bar. Brilliant score. Kilkenny are in deep, deep trouble here. Paul Barrett is in there. Walter Walsh is trying to get it out. TJ Reid lays it back first. Killian Buckley. Nice ball inside. Connor Brown makes the space. Brian Hogan deals with it capably. Seamus Kennedy. Down towards Connor Fogarty. And here comes the goal scorer from the first half. Milo Mara with the box ball is well wide. Kilroy and McDonough, a club that produced so many stars, including Len Gaynor in the past. James McGarry and Brian Cody having a brief conversation. Changes in tactics. A oh, fantastic catch once again by Barry Heffernan. Michael Breen scored a point in the first half. Lays it off for his Noel McGuire. Has the time to steady, shoot, and score. One from a free, one from play. Tipperary fans are happy. And he just makes it look so easy. You know, there was a few runners off the ball. Dan McCormick made room for him, but he just knew exactly where he was, the time he had, the space on the ball, and a class player when he gets that sort of room. Three clear goals between the teams now. John McGrath. Oh, good play, Hugh Lawler. Paddy Deegan. Nice little hook by Jamie Callanan. I think there's more than a shoulder. The linesman, Johnny Murphy, agreeing with the referee's decision. The referee, James Owens, had already given a free. The story of the first half, the story perhaps of this All Ireland final, the sending off of Richie Hogan after 33 minutes. Tipperary have now scored two goals and five points all from play in the second half. Kilkenny have only just responded with three, but they are playing, as you know, with 14. TJ Reid going for his 11th point. Just a few metres outside his own 65-metre line. Spot on. Excellent play. Yeah, that's a great free, and back to Richie Hogan, he's sitting there, you know, as I said before half-time, he's saying, why did I do it, you know, it was, it was reckless, it was, it was silly, I was allowing for the conditions a bit, but he came with the elbow up and uh, ended up on the line, and, you know, it really has changed the game, uh, Tipperary just getting that extra space out there, Barrett picking up everything at the back, and their forwards really getting that little more time on the ball. Richie Lahey is coming on from uh, Rowan Esteeg, instead of Killian Buckley as the ball drops down. This is Billy Ryan, has been very impressive in the championship of 2019 whenever he got a chance. And he got an opportunity here when he puts it between the posts and over the bar. Good play. Yeah, he's a very good player, this Billy Ryan. He's great pace and, you know, you see it there, Tipperary left that. One lad left to another lad, Barry Heffernan tipped it down. Ryan was on the break and over the bar. 
Ivana Fogarty trying to gather it up. Arlo Mara, Dan McCormick are in there for Tipperary. It's a bit of a struggle. Dilly Ryan is there, bobbling all over the place. Noel McGrath. Into the space for John Odewire to chase after it. Joey Holden with it. Oh, what trickery. Magic. In front of Jason Ford and over the bar. Beautifully created. Sensationally finished. It's Tipperary rocking and rolling to their 28th All Ireland title. Marty, it's unbelievable that you know the hands, but Noel McGrath's vision before that to pick him out. He saw him running, he picked him out. Look at lovely little touch and unselfish again. I think that's something that this tip forward line, they give it to the man the best position all the time, and it's very hard to defend against that. Carl Barrett over first, Dan McCormack. Boris Ali, secondary school teacher in Carrigan Shore. And Kenny under severe pressure. Ends up with Paddy Deegan. Aiming again for Colin Fennelly. But to be honest, it's a waste of possession by Kilkenny. They are going to have to run at it. The tactics are wrong. Comes first Noel McGrath. Corey Walsh gets a touch. Good work again by Hugh Lawler. Where's Paddy Deegan? John Donnelly calling for it. Three against two, four against two as I look at it. Comes out first, Noel McGrath. Barry Heffernan. Seamus Kennedy. He's played well at left half back. Nile O'Mara. Nice wrists. Jason Ford. Back to Seamus Kennedy once more as the ball is floated in from out the middle of the field. And that ball is wide. And that's Tipperary six wide of the game. Off the stick. Party bar. Yeah, they don't think Liam Sheedy's going to be too happy, you know, going for the lot of sharp pass and fancy flicks around. There's a long way to go in this game yet. Uh, they have a lovely lead, and he just wanted to put Kilkenny away if they can and not to be messing with possession. Go, go, go. John Donnelly. Did he Ryan is inside? Quality ball. Going through is Richie Lai. Losing the possession. Good marking by Tipperary. Ball comes loose. It's still available. Tipperary were a little bit hesitant inside their own large rectangle. And Barry Heffernan lays it off. And Tipperary relieved the pressure. An effort that is simply sublime. Jason Ford, class, absolute class. Yeah, look at that after. Kilkenny had a half a chance there. Could have broken onto it there, Richie Lahey. But just the class to have. Here we are here. Ball left in there. With loads of defenders there. If you look around, you know, the, uh, Tipperary, look, you have to say, they've also upped their game. It's not just down to the 14 men. The second half, they've come out completely different teams than they were in the first half. Tony Maher, brilliant catch. Nilo Mara, the goal scorer. The first half has gone off. Mark Hill is on. And it's that ball. It's sent wide. Owen Murphy aims for John Donnelly. Noel McGrath. That was Dan McCormack. That carries a little bit too much pace. Owen Murphy to Connor Fogarty. Dropping it in again around the house. Brilliant catch. Ronan Maher to the brother party. Up towards. John of the wire, Joey Holden should get there first. Laying it back for his own Murphy. The keeper looks around at options. He goes for that long delivery. TJ Reid is at the edge of the square. He's claiming he was fouled. Ronan Mara comes out. Drives it down the middle. John McGrath comes in search of possession. Two against two here. Batted away on this occasion. John Donnelly from way out the field. That's a great point. The third of the match. Yeah, and Marty, look, a long stretch of play there with the ball going up and down the field. But the one thing you'd be sure of with Kenny, they're not going to pack it in. They'll keep battling for every ball. But uh, Tipperary, just in this second, just watch this here. Was this a foul, Michael? No. 
he went to ground, he wasn't fouled, uh, in my view. And uh, the high ball, Marty, you mentioned a few times, not working. Ronan Maher giving a brilliant display at full back, catching balls, breaking them. He's not going to be beaten in the air. Carl Barrett delivers a long ball, gathered by Paul Murphy. He's taken out by Jason Ford. And the referee will surely have a word with the corner forward from Silvermines. Now, this is interesting. You can hear 82,300 in Croke Park give vent to their feelings. Liam Sheedy is a little bit concerned. It's a yellow card for Jason Ford. Can you watch it here, Omar Murphy? The arm is up. It's not, it's not aggressive. You know, just watch it here. The arm is just up, not as aggressive. I think the yellow card, the right call there. James Marr. He's on for Kilkenny. Conor Brown is the player that's gone off. Seamus Kennedy has the composure to see that John McGuire was available. Good ball over towards Mark Kill. This is a really talented hurler. 20 and he's towards the 13. And the referee has blown his whistle and he's given a free. Yeah, very direct play there by Mark Kill. Very good player, as you say. Just watch there, probably just foul there when he was going through. If you could see inside, if a hand pass, Shems Callan was loose inside, didn't see him, uh, but the free one in, in any event. He was on the UCC team that won the Fitzgibbon earlier this year. Mark Hill from Kilsheelan Kilkash. Jason Ford, he's going for his ninth point of the game. Should be a simple tap over for him. Wisely takes it with ease and style. And I think Tip's set up in the second half, Marty. John McGrath has gone to centre half forward since half time and he's drifted off Torrick Walsh all throughout the second half and created so much, got him so much possession. He's been key man in, in I think, pulling the strings. Paul Murphy again driving it long. TJ Reid, fantastic catch, but the finish. Is wide. I can see what Brian Cody is doing by putting TJ Reid in around the house at full forward and try and drive the ball into him. Yeah, look, it's the, goal, the knee goals. He's their best player to put him in near the goals, but you know, it's very one dimensional and Barrett's sitting back to us. If it breaks at all, Tipper going to pick it up. Barry Heffernan. Good hands. Joey Holder to Conor Fogarty. TJ Reid, 50 50 ball, and he wins it. Lays it off. Colin Finley has come in search of scores out around the half forward line. And he gets his second point. That's a brilliant take by TJ Reid. He was fouled, going for the ball, he was fouled when he had it. Still got away the hand pass to Finley and super score. Colin Finley's first point. Billy Ryan's uh, scored uh, just a moment ago as well. So Finlay on his first. Willie Connors is coming on for Tipperary. Dan McCormick is the one that's making way. Owen Murphy. The target is Walter Watch. Oh, Barry Heffernan. Superb. From Nina Aero Gondor Tipperary. Paddy Deegan. Nowhere to go, really. Torrig Walsh from Tullero. To Richie Lahi. TJ Reid is hovering again. Oof. In comes Walter Walsh. Bit of a stalemate there. Nobody giving an inch. Still available. And out comes Ronan Maher yet again. Brilliant play. Centre back, wing back, corner back, you can play him anywhere. He'll deliver. Owen Murphy. And Glenn Moore in his 35th championship match. Walter Walsh underneath it. But once again, it's Tipperary under the high ball. Superb. And it's Barry Heffernan again, Marty. Barry, the first mistake of the game where he gave away a hand pass. He's had an unbelievable game here. Is that over the bar? Mark Kyo. Fantastic point. 
But Martin, that came from heaven as I was saying. Now, what a game he's had. That's three unbelievable catches in the second half. Here's Kyo, breaks away over the bar, and he's one of these subs that when Tip brought him in against Wexford himself, Willie Connors, uh, I don't know who else we got, Jerry Brown that day as well, Jake Morris, all come on and scored a point each. And here's Joey Holden, he went down on the last ball, hurt himself, and he's got off injured now as well. Condol Connor Delaney is on, and the Aaron's own club. Catching us and fielding is just something to behold. Brilliant play. Pass on this occasion is not a great one. Connor Fogarty is there. John Donnelly continues to work hard. Richie Lai, just on this occasion, the ball bypassed him. Tipperary have it again. Jamie Callanan. Well, that's a, that's that a free. Should, that's that a should be a free. As you'll ever see, yeah. Ball comes down again towards TJ Reid and company. Tipperary man seems to have injured himself. Carl Barrett is holding his left thigh. Here comes Walter Walsh. Here's all oh, brilliant defending. Comes back outside. TJ Reid just left it behind him. Ball is bobbling all over the place. And once more, Tipperary with their backs to the wall. And it's party mark. And it, was Potty, one of them. it was Potty that made the block as well. A lot of white helmets in there. I'm fairly sure it was Potty Mar. An unbelievable block. Up towards Willie Connors. Connor Delaney bravely going down on the ball. Laying it off. Far as Richie Lai. Lai gathers it. John Delon. John Tunnelly there with him. Lai blocks it. TJ Reid. Potty Walsh has gone inside. They need to create goal opportunities, but they'll be happy to take the point. Corey Walsh's first point in this All-Ireland final. Credit Kilkenny, they're not giving up. They won't give up, but, but here's Walter Walsh, he's thinking goal here. I look at Paddy Maher, stands in front of him, keeps behind the ball, what a prop. And he ended up getting back up and winning the ball and clearing a great piece of play by, I suppose, the real leader, you know, himself and Callan, but at the back, Maher, for over 10 years now. Brilliant uh, wing-back, centre-back. And uh, shown his work there again, and Jason Ford going off there now. And Jason Ford has done his bit for Tipperary. Jake Morris is on. Carl Barrett has picked up a leg injury. And the player that's coming on is Sean O'Brien from Newport. And his Tipperary bench is now required by Liam Sheedy. And a warm round of applause from the Tipperary supporters. Kilkenny put the pressure on. Hefty challenge on Sean O'Brien. Walter Walsh, fair one. Colin Finley flicking it forward. Comes back outside towards John Donnelly. They're queuing up inside. Ball runs on. There's an opportunity here. And Tipperary had the situation under control. But once again, Ronan Maher. Two Mars have been superb. Willie Cox played for a little while with the Tipperary footballers. Dropping this one in, Old Murphy comes off his goal line, being pursued by Jake Morris. Ball straight down the middle towards Paddy Deegan. Deegan laying it off. Connor Delaney. Kilkenny continue to chase. Nice ball inside from Billy Ryan. TJ Reid coming across. Working hard is John McGrath. Laying it off to the brother. The diagonal ball. And Tipperary looking sharp. Jake Morris twisting and turning. The body language would suggest that that's over the bar. Brilliant, brilliant play. Scored a crucial goal in the under 20. All-Ireland uh, semi-final recently, and he certainly is a player with rich potential. Isn't he? That was a great score, Marty. It started by John McGregor, and he went back, won the ball in front of his own half-back, and gave it to Noel on the, on the way out, and he played a lovely ball into Morris's path. And he's a player who's grown and grown and grown, as you say, during the year. I think that Munster final goal in the last day in the under-21 has really, really come of age. And here's Jake again, this time. Great block down from Paul Murphy. But Jake Morris, another one of the Nina Aero lads. This time, while he recovered the possession, ball is driven wide. Eight wides for Tipperary in this All-Ireland final. But the scoreboard says it all. Just about eight minutes to go. 28 points to 19. 
319 to 19. And Tipperary in control. Sean O'Dwyer outside the Kilkenny 65. Let's fly. And it sails between the posts. That's a goal and two points for the Killinall. Sensational wing forward. Yeah, tip one of Windows Alarm, I think. The rejuvenation of himself and Colin Barrett this year under Liam Sheedy, I think, is massive in terms of the run they've had. The two of them have been brilliant throughout the year, and last year not that involved at all. And you know, the question marks over whether they'd even be back playing into County Hurling. The two of them have been immense under Sheedy. Connor Delaney laying it off first. Connor Fogarty, Paddy Deegan sending it back up again. Tipperary masterful in the air. Paddy Maher under a little bit of pressure. Gives it back far as Barry Heffernan. Playing really well. Full back. Crossfield ball with intended. Didn't reach its target. Paul Murphy read the situation well. Nice hands. Nice pick up. It's Billy Ryan. Incisive. And indeed quite decisive. That's a fine score. Yeah, he's a lovely hurler. He reminds me a little bit of Eddie Brennan when he said, look, a brilliant pick up. Very quick. Got the head up and... Let it look simple over the bar. They need goals though uh, at this stage. You know, they're going to need a goal straight away and early if they're going to have any chance in this. Brian Hogan goes short on this occasion for his Noel McGrath. Little flick up. Nice wrist by Paddy Maher. Hugh Lawler gets there ahead of Jamie Cannon. Cannon making it a little bit difficult for him, chasing. Good play by the full back from O'Loughlin Gales. Paddy Deegan. Torrig Walsh back to Deegan once more. Connor Fogarty. It's the time to gather because there's nobody from Tipperary near him. But when that ball is delivered, Tipperary are just doing this for fun at this stage because every ball is driven long. They really are underneath it. They're fielding and their distribution is top class. Yeah, well, look, they're very, very strong in the air. The, the two Mars as, as usual. But the player, Barry Heffern and Seamus Kendi, you know, Dave. They've had to fight for the place on this Tipperary team. They came in for the semi-final. The two of them have been absolutely brilliant out there today. Uh, they're big men. They're attacking the ball. Look, it's been comfortable for Tipperary in the second half. They've sent it off. It's probably the big turning point in the game. And uh, But I think Tipperary also up, up their performance massively in the second half. Paulie Myers is going off as a blood substitution. The Liam McCarthy Cup has the black and amber, blue and gold ribbons. But right now, with five minutes to go or thereabouts... The feeling is that Liam McCarthy is going to Tipperary. James Barry is coming on. He's uh, just a blood substitution there for Porrig Mark. Ball is dropping in again. Ball hops out over the end line and wide. Four minutes to go. For Brian Cody, it looks like disappointment. Connor Delaney gathers the short puck out from Owen Murphy. James Marr is battling hard. Referee has blown his whistle. He's given a free. But there's no doubt about it, Michael. The turning point was the sending off of Richie Hogan. Yeah, huge, huge moment. And uh, look at he's not. He's been around a long, long time. It was silly. He was rash. He came charging in. Uh, this ball has gone wide. He came charging in. There was no need for Kilkenny were well in the game. You know, they dominated the first 20, 25 minutes. Um, and look, there he is. Like, he knows he's going to be very, very disappointed. He's been a great servant to Kilkenny. And, um, you know, so has this man. And it's going to be a very, very hard defeat for him to take. And this time last year, Tipperary looked to be in the doldrums. And we saw Liam Sheedy a minute ago. What, a, what an impact he has made in coming back into tip this year. Noel Maguire was twice an All-Star back in 2009 and 2010. And his 43rd championship appearance today. Paddy Deegan playing his 18th. Back first, Paul Murphy. Seamus Kennedy attacking the ball ahead of John Donnelly. Quick ball inside. John McGrath. And it's over the bar. Three points for the corner forward from Lockmore. That's the line. Yeah, Seamus Kennedy, you know, we mentioned him a few times already. But um, key man a number of years ago on the tip team had gone away, gone a bit astray. There's Tariq Maher back on. But uh, 
Look at over the year since the first time I saw them down against Cork in Park and Cueve, they've been massively impressive. Apart from the Munster final, the best team in the country all year and uh, they're going to be deserving all Ireland champions. Ball into the centre. Tipperary going for the score from way out the field. That is some, some point. Off the stick of Ger Brown, one of the new emerging stars coming from the under-20 racks. And he is going to be serious. He is a great player, uh, watching him for a number of years, minor under-21. Outstanding. Just about two minutes, well, a minute and a half left in this All-Ireland final. The word coming from the sideline, there could be three extra minutes. That will be confirmed shortly. Colin Finley. Tipperary there in numbers, Ronan Marr trying to dig it out. Finley has it once more, bearing down in goal. Still Finley and the referee has blown his result. It's a free in for Kilkenny. It just looks, even if they do score a goal, it's too little, too late, I'm afraid, for the Cats on this particular day. I've no doubt that TJ Reid will probably go for goal. That gives you an idea of what it's like along the line for the Tipperary goalkeeper in defence. That's the angle. 11 points between the teams. TJ blocked, pulled up, cleared. And Seamus Kennedy chases after it. Great play. Giving it into the centre to John McGuire. They're finishing in style. They're finishing with a flourish. Back off the post. Hugh Lawler. Defending well. Shamie Callanan. Bursting forward. Conor Delaney fouls. And the referee, in fact, has given a free out for taking too many steps. Yeah. Three minutes of additional time now confirmed. So Ronald Maher stepped out straight, straight at him in fairness and blocked it out and a free out there for Kenny and Here comes Kilkenny, Walter Walsh. Mad scramble just outside the Tipperary D. But Kilkenny have it. Good work on this occasion by Richie Lai. Trying to dig it out once again. Tipperary are giving nothing away. Absolutely nothing. Sean O'Brien from Newport. North tip. Nice little stick work by Mark Hill. The follow-up was superb. And the finish just a little bit off. The Tipperary with Ger Brown and so many others coming through like Mark Kill, Jack Morris. There is new stars emerging and this will be a huge, massive, significant victory for them as well. Noel Maguire. Quick hands. Ferris Willie Connors, who lets fly, and the slither goes straight between the posts over the black spot. And Tipperary are really flying it. And four subs come on the last and scored a point. The four of them have done it again today. Don't have ever saw that happen before. Ger Brown, Mark Yo, Willie Connors, and Jack Morris. Four of them come in today over a point each. Four of them the last day against Wexford a point each. And people thought Tip hadn't got a bench. Ball breaks down into the path of Big Walter Walsh, but nothing gone right for Big Walter. Here comes Torrig Barr. Quick hands again. Over first, Willie Connors. He's going for a second. The man is on fire. Kira Dangan will be so proud of Willie Connors. But the impact of John McGraw, Martin, this second half. He has won a mountain of ball in that position between midfield and his own half back then, laying off little passes all over the place. And he's just been immense in the second half, along with an awful lot of temporary players. Noel McGuire. Nice little ball out first, Mark Kill. Jake Morris. He's only one thing on his mind. Pass it in. Here's Son and the ball is yeah. on sailing wide. See John O'Dwyer's hurl about 40 yards out on the ground. He lost it on the way in and he went to kick it. He has no future in football anyway after that, but it's, it's a free in anyway. 
Good work by Jake Morris, spotting that Odwire was free. He had no hurley, because he'd lost the hurley about out near the 45 metre line. Yellow card for Owen Murphy. Yeah, he's been arguing with James Owens for quite a while now, not happy since he got the belt and uh, very, very frustrated at challenging a lot of decisions there over the last few months. Shamey Callanan about to captain Tipperary to an All-Ireland victory and That's scoring it. a goal and two points in the process. Liam Sheedy, the prodigal son from Port Row in North Tipperary, has returned after nine years to the blue and gold and has once again beaten Brian Cody in an All-Ireland final. He stopped the five in a row in 2010. He comes back after a, a long break to take charge of his beloved Tipperary. And look at what he's done. Only four counties now have come back from losing the provincial final to win the All-Ireland. 1998, Offaly. 2004, Cork. 2012, Kilkenny. 2019, Tipperary. Liam Sheedy and Brian Cody shake hands. Cody congratulates Sheedy. Sheedy commiserates with the great manager himself, Brian Cody. But right now, tears of joy all over Tipperary. From Port Row, Gary Kennedy and Puckhorn, that's Liam Sheedy country. And today, he is very much a hero in the Premier County. Yeah, I think an amazing achievement, you know. I think we know Liam well, you know, we worked on the Sunday game, but he's a great leader of men and he showed that. Um, you know, just, just been brilliant. Apart from the Munster final, when they were missing Cahill Barrett and Bonner, they weren't good, they weren't at their best. Limerick were brilliant that day, but apart from that, they've been outstanding all year. Um, I just counted 11 different scores from play today. Incredible, incredible uh, second half. And they're sending off at a big bairn, but at the end of the day, we saw the full range of the hurl in the second half. All the great players came to the fore, all their leaders, and a brilliant second half after a shaky start. Amazing scenes on the pitch here in Cold Park. This means so much for Owen Murphy and Glenn Moore from his club. Well, he cannot be blamed today because he really played well between the posts. He wasn't really tested far once or twice, and he was certainly under pressure when Richie Hogan was sent off. Huge disappointment for Kilkenny, but for Brian Hogan from Laura Dora in County Tipperary, for Shamie Callanan from Drummondinch, this is a very special day. Let's go down to the sideline for Shamie Callanan with my colleague Claire McNamara. Seamus Callanan, you're an All Ireland winning captain. We can see just how much it means. Unbelievable feeling. This is just incredible. Just incredible. It's everything we fucking dreamed of. Everything we dreamed of. I just think we put in so much work and finally get there in the end of it. It's just an unbelievable feeling. I was so proud of that group there. Incredible. And another goal for you, one in every game, eight from eight. You look, that doesn't really matter when you have a performance like that from everyone else. You see the lads coming out of the backs there, catching high ball, constantly, constantly driving out. It's a complete effort from everyone that's there, backroom, backroom team and 40 panel. So we just enjoy this, it's brilliant. Obviously the sending off had a huge effect on the game, but you handled that well and you worked your extra man. Yeah, we handled it well. We just did, I suppose, playing our game and implementing our strategies on the game. Uh, we didn't deviate, even though we had a numerical advantage. So it was just, uh, oh look, it's just great. It's just great. We believed in the process and, and we it worked, so that's it's great. That man, Liam Sheedy, back with you and done it again. Yeah, uh, Liam is a legend. I'm so delighted for Liam. Put so much into it here. So, look, it's great for everyone, the whole group. A serious support unit there as well, so it's just unbelievable. What's it going to be like for you now? You get to climb those steps to collect that cup. Every hurler's dream. Yeah, every hurler's dream since they're a young lad. And uh, finally going to get up those steps and I want to enjoy every bit of it. Thanks very much, Seamus. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Party Mar, congratulations, All Ireland champions. That was something else. Yeah, Dara, um, unbelievable. It's hard to put into words. Uh, we worked so hard for it all year and. Um, Thankfully, you know, we got there in the end. I know ourselves and Kenny's had some battled over the years. And, you know, even they went to 14 men there today, they still put it, made us work really, really hard for it. And uh, look, we're great. It's, back to, it's great to back to where we want to be. Very different to this time last year, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, what a difference the year makes. You know, um, last year was tough, but look, we were struggling last year. 
this year we really locked it down again and uh, we took a game by game and the most championship was tough but we got through it and look where we are now today and it is all worth it now Darrell. For sure, the sending off was huge but you know how you use the extra man, that worked out so well for you and it doesn't always work for the team with the numerical advantage. Yeah you know I suppose we were in the same boat in the semi-final you know we knew that you know it's very easy when you're, going to, when you're up a man that you can maybe slacken off a bit but we made sure we didn't do that and we drove on and thanks for we got the, the win. Well done, well done. Congratulations, thanks, enjoy. Well done, well done. And such another fine performance from Porg Maher and from all of the Tipperary team really today. And what a return for Liam Sheedy, his first year back in charge. And he does just what he did in his last year in charge the last time. And that was claim the All-Ireland title by beating Brian K uh, Cody's Kilkenny. Impressed, Donal Oak, how can you not be? Huge performance, how can you not be, Joanne? Second half, Tipperary were outstanding. Now, I will say I, I was surprised with the lack of opposition that Kilkenny did give him in the second half. Even though Kilkenny went down to 14 men, I did think it was going to be closer. I couldn't have seen Tipperary running out 14 point victors, but that's nothing to take away from the performance. Like you'd Ronan Maher, Noel McGrath, Noel McGrath especially gave a performance for the ages. I don't know if there's anyone ever has as many possessions in an All Ireland final. And some of his skill, even in the first half when things were tight, he was outstanding, but he gave an exhibition in the second half. I, I think that's been a little bit harsh on Kilkenny being honest, Donald, because I think the one team you don't want to go down an extra man to is Tipperary, because you just said it, Noel McGrath, he used the ball so, so well. And I think Kenny were just basically, they hung in there as best they can. But OK, more on that way. in a moment. But as you can see, the Tipperary captain, Seamus Callanan, is about to get his hands on Liam McCarthy. So let's head back to Marty. John Horne, the president of the GA, about to present the Liam McCarthy Cup to Seamus Callanan. Tipperary, All-Ireland champions for the 28th time. They'll be singing Sleeve them on. In Barissa Kane, Barissa Lee, Claire, Clamel, Nina Rusgray, Tommy Barra, and Mullen home. Today is Tipperary's day in Club Park. An emotional day for the people of Tipperary. Their second half performance was awesome. They scored two goals and 16 points, 214 from play in that second period. Remarkable. Here is the Tipperary captain. Shamey Callan. Who are on here and who come on Luke Laskell? Tawn Ahasorum, Colonel Lee McCarthy, Gagaka, her son, Foran, Tipperary! It's a great honour for me as a proud Tipperary man to lift this cup on behalf of the Tipperary Senior Hurling Panel of 2019. Because our journey started back last November with the most committed group of players that we could ever imagine for. So firstly, I'd like to thank every one of those players. There's 40 men on that panel and they've given absolutely everything for a blue and gold jersey since we met up the very first day up in Morris Park. So I'd like to thank you so much for that, lads. You're unbelievable. I'd like to thank the referee, the officials, and all the linesmen and ground staff, stewards, and everyone here in Crow Park for, I suppose, having everything here on display for us in perfect order. And I'd like to thank you all very much for that. <laughs> to the Tipperary County Board and Supporters Club, who support us year in, year out. It's amazing the support we have from you, and long may it last, and thank you very much. To Declan Kelly and Teneo, our sponsors that came on board this year. They've been unbelievable and they've provided an unbelievable platform for us as players to be able to go out there and put on a performance like we did today. So Declan and Teneo, thanks so much for all your support. <laughs> to all the players, their families, their friends, their partners who have supported us all on this amazing journey. You've been there through us, through thick and thin, all the ups and downs over the last few years. You've always stood by our side and provided that support to for us, and we couldn't be more grateful for that. <laughs> to our backroom team, 
you see the job you guys have done with this group of players, I suppose, especially even the last day in the semi final against Wexford. So it's a huge credit there to Mick Lossie and Declan Maher, who are Masurs for the year, to have us in the shape on the pitch there today. Thank you very much, lads. <laughs> to our physios, Paddy O'Brien and Tom Quinn, and our doctor, Brendan Murphy. You're a credit, lads, and thank you so much for everything you've provided us throughout the year. Next, we have two great lads, three great lads. We've Brian Statham, John Sheedy, and Cork McGrath, lads. And everything that we ever asked for throughout the year, you were there to support us. And it means everything to us, lads. You're unbelievable, so thanks very much. Our sprint coach, we Shane McCormack as sprint coach. He was unbelievable, and you can see it there in the, the old legs near the end. We're still going, so thank you very much. To uh, Darren Gleeson, who came in as goalkeeping coach. Unbelievable to see the job you've done with the boys there as well. So thanks very much, Darren. To Gary Sweeney, our dietitian and nutritionist. We couldn't have asked for more. Everything was laid on for us. Thank you so much for being able to put all that together for us to have us in the shape we are today. Then we have Damien Young, Sean Flynn and Finn Briody. The guys done, I suppose, countless hours of video analysis and any work we ever wanted as you were there, so thanks so much for that. We've Ray Bynan and his team as well on stats. You're incredible throughout the year, lads. The info that we had from you, so thanks again. To Billy O'Shea and John Smith, we wanted for nothing all year, lads. So thanks so much for your support, always. We had a great Owen Kelly come in, lads, to do some individual work with us. So Owen, thanks so much for your guidance around it here. On to our SNC guys, we had Jim Ricard there to back up an absolute legend in Carborough Carlon. He put some serious work into us, lads, and that work didn't go unnoticed there on the pitch and allowed us to perform as best we could. So thanks so much, guys. We'll move on to our incredible management team. We had Tommy Dunn, Darry Egan, Eamon O'Shea, unbelievable men, unbelievable temporary men who have given absolutely everything, guys. And guys, that was to be seen on the pitch. Their energy every single night we went into training, lads, was unbelievable. So thanks so much. And what do we say about this next man? <laughs> the one and only, Mr. Liam Sheedy! Liam has been a bundle of energy, lads, since he came back. And also as a group, lads, we can't thank you enough. The platform he put on for us, lads, the backroom team he put, he put together, everything was laid on for us. We could not have wanted for more. And thanks so much, Liam, for your dedication, your energy, and everything that you've given to the Tipperary jersey. I'd like to thank the Tipperary supporters. You came out in force, lads. We needed you, lads, every step of the way. Thanks so much for making the journey up here. And we will celebrate this, lads, for the next few days back in Torrance and Drummond Inch. And lastly, but not least, you lads, I'd like to say three cheers to Kilkenny. Kilkenny are an unbelievable rival of ours, but we have incredible respect for them. Thank you so much, lads. We put on a great show out there today. You gave absolutely everything for your jersey, as you always do. You can be very proud of yourselves, and thanks so much for a great game, lads. I'm sure we'll meet you well along, along the way again. So three cheers to Kilkenny. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Tip it around the bow! Oh, what a brilliant performance yet again, all season long, from the Tipperary captain, Shamey Callanan. And you heard poor Maher there talk about the hurt of last year. All Ireland champions in 2016, beaten by that piece of absolute magic by Joe Canning, right at the end of the All Ireland semi final the following year. And then, of course, last year they didn't, they didn't even get out of Munster. It shows some comeback, doesn't it, Anthony? Yeah, well, I suppose as soon as the, there was a lot of candidates banded around uh, who was taken over from Mick Ryan after he quit. And, you know, as soon as the name Liam Sheedy was mentioned, Joanne, I think the Tipperary County Board it was a no-brainer. 
you know, successful man on and off the field and uh, you know, gives it absolutely everything. As he said beforehand, even if we were nowhere, I'd be giving this everything. But you know, when he's giving it everything, you just listen to Jamie mentioning the backroom staff there, what Liam surrounded himself with, I'd say he was immense. Uh, top class guys and um, but I'd be lucky to work with Tommy Dunn in, in, in Dublin and, and Carbro Caroline in Limerick and, and you know, brilliant guys, top guys, you wouldn't get them in any sport um, and you know success is theirs today and deservedly they had a, a mid-season sort of a blip but uh, they came back fresh today I felt you know and uh, deserve champions I know the sending off will be a major talking point but uh, Great, great victory for Liam and, and his men. And mentioning top class, mentioning top class people, like I think they're touching it there. Declan Kelly, Antonio. I wouldn't underestimate, like what Shami said about the platform that game and the importance of that type of support in the modern day game. And I know he's a passionate Tipperary man, a hugely successful man himself, but. His support shouldn't be underestimated, I'd imagine. Well, we said the same, port, la port <laughs> we said the same last year with JP McManus and the Limerick backroom staff and the Tipperary. But I will say, the one thing I know about Liam, the minute the final was over, he walked up the line, the whole management team came together in a hug, and that's, that's his greatest status, I think. He can bring people with him on the journey, and his delegation. Like, to bring Eamon O'Shea back in, you know, was a big call by him, but Liam doesn't mind doing that. He surrounded and, and himself. And the time of year that he brought Eamon O'Shea in, it wasn't before the, the league, it but wasn't, it was kind been, of in between things. You know, we've heard on the lead-up, he's been kind of building, building, Joanne, and I think that's what he's doing. There's the two Mars, it's a great day for the, that family, they were immense, but I, I think he's been building, and, you know, I think, uh, talking down a couple of things, to make Seamus Callanan the captain was a big call because that was never we never identified Seamus as a captain, but a big call to make. I remember watching another game during the league down in um, there's the great Bonnermar, obviously you know crucial league event, but uh, another game down in, in Limerick again very foggy night in February, and I remember seeing Ronan Mar corner back and I was saying why is Ronan Mar playing corner back? He's not going to make it. Yeah. But without that, I think that's what Lean was building that versatility in all his team. Thinking of him, his strategy and his vision for the future to get Ronan Mar up here in the last two biggest games in the year, playing full back, he's used to that position. It's not so new to me. So I think that's been his greatest skill. And it's a it's a major major story. Plus the, the way they handled it, John. They went hard early in Munster. You know, they went down into Cork, produced a huge performance. They beat Waterford, then they came up in tennis and beat Clare by 13 points. Now I didn't see that happen. I thought Clare would absolutely lock yeah. the gates, but they came up and the heavy lifting was done really then. You know, okay, they didn't win the Munster final, but still they had that bit of time to build up and be ready for that semi-final game. And uh, you know, that's look at that's the reward at the end of it. Well, they're milking it, aren't they? They really are milking. Oh no, they're waiting for Tommy to really? come up ah, to make yeah. sure, make sure the whole management team is, this is there. This is the picture they'll be hanging in their, you know, sitting room, you know, and watching it for years and years to come. They're dead right. They want to work that goes in in the backroom team. That's the thing. It's all yeah. like. I'd say, <laughs> like I'd say, you're, you, you, I'd imagine, like you said, Liam is a busy man. I'd imagine if he's spending anything less than 40 hours at this job every every week, I'd be surprised. But you know, anywhere I've come across him over the years, be it business, sport, maybe a couple of boards and things like that, he always brings a really positive energy to whatever That's he's doing. Energy, yeah. Energy, yeah. And I think that was seen all over the Tipperary team this year. And you did mention Eamon O'Shea before. And when Eamon O'Shea was brought in, you see the man behind Liam there, Tommy Dunn, there were question marks, what's yeah, that going to do yeah, to affect Peter, Tommy Dunn's role? Again, I go back to Liam on that. Uh, Joanne, that that's the leadership Liam brings. That, like Tommy was the coach, and O'Shea has landed on mid-season. Like, would Tommy get his nose out of time? No, I'm sure that was discussed with Tommy. Are you happy with that, Tommy? Can we go with that? He led to us, and they would have worked together superbly. Okay. okay, Henry did talk about how Ronan Maher was changed in terms of position this season by Liam Sheedy. Brendan Maher got a new role for much of this summer as well, and he at the moment is down pitch side with Claire. Yes, Brendan, congratulations. We've just seen your management team get a huge ovation up at, at, at the top of the steps there with the Liam McCarthy Cup. And just talk to me about the job that they and the rest of the management have done with this group, Brendan. Uh, it's hard to put into words, I suppose, the effort and the energy that they've given to the group. And really, they just laid a platform for us to perform, and it's really handed it over to us. Um, everything that we look for, we got, and more. Um, so I suppose it made our job very easy that we could just focus on playing and performing. And, um, as I said, anything, anything that we wanted or anything that was needed, it was there. Take me back through the game. The red card was huge and what, so close to half time as well. But how you reacted to that felt very important. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose it was a harsh, harsh red card. I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, like I think the one thing we said at half time as well in the few minutes uh, afterwards, we we were saying I suppose Wexford kind of changed our game plan when we they, when we went to man down. So we said we need to learn lessons from that. So 
Uh, we addressed it, we spoke about it, so we said attacking the game as, as if it was 15 on 15, and that, thankfully that worked away, worked out. And for the group as well, you know, because well, this, this, all the experienced players last year was, was not a very good year, to put it mildly, and to be here today, taking the Liam McCarthy Cup home tonight. That's ah, great, yeah, I mean, 12 months ago, uh, myself personally, I was lying on a couch watching All-Ireland after getting surgery, and uh, it's, you know, it's what a difference a year makes, and for the group as a whole, uh, two disappointing years um, since 2016, so it's, it's great to, to get there again today. Adam Brennan, congratulations. Well done, sir. Claire. Oh, yeah, sorry. Liam Sheedy, we saw you there lift the Liam McCarthy Cup with some of your backroom team. You certainly enjoyed that. Yeah, look, it's uh, it's a long journey, and I guess on the 30th of June, it was it looked like we were a long ways away from here, and people were probably very unimpressed about our quarter-final victory, but you know we built massive momentum in that semi-final when the real questions was asked, and thankfully we carried that momentum into the final today you know we went those few points down earlier on and we needed Nyla Mara's goal we were gasping for air at the time but once we got the goal we settled and look the second half I thought you know we played some outstanding hurling and just delighted overall these lads have put in massive effort and look I suppose people have questioned their character questioned their ability to go into trenches and various things and today thankfully they gave, they gave all the answers in, inside the white lines and that's ultimately today is not about me Claire it's about that wonderful wonderful group of players that's given me everything since the middle of November and you know, thankfully they get their just two hours today. You know, massive second half performance. Obviously, you did have an extra man. What's your thoughts on that? The I, red card, and obviously I, it can be tricky to deal with an extra yeah, man. Yeah, I honestly didn't see it clear. I mean, it, it seemed to indicate that it was high. I, I was a long ways away from it there, and obviously it was a massive turning point in the game. You know, as I said, for long periods of that first half, we were gasping for air. And I thought Cahill played the extra man very, very well. Give us a little bit of ability to break the ball away, and once the ball broke away, we spoiled. But having said that, like Rona Maher, Brenda Maher, Seamus Kendi, Paddy Maher, Barry Heffernan, I mean... I just thought our defenders were colossal all day and you know really I thought they set the platform for us disappointed with some of our distribution at times it wasn't the way we'd, we'd like it to be but ultimately we'd, we'd done enough and, and we, we played well today Maybe an unexpected winning margin I suppose everyone was predicting this big tight final but obviously yeah. the, the red card yeah, had that look, bearing I guess, you know, That's why made, probably the sending off probably made the scoreboard look a bit false in the finish but you know, I have players that if they get on the ball they can do serious things with them and thankfully we got some like some of the scores we took from distance today were of the highest order so just thrilled just thrilled I suppose such a huge turnaround in fortune and feeling from once your final day. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, ultimately it is all about the big prize, you know, and I mean, All-Ireland Final 2019, you know, and I guess for this team, you know, there's probably been a lot of question marks asked about this team, you know, the reality is when you look back in this decade, Tipperary have won three finals in this decade, I think that's a really, really good return, so I think we have some of the best players that ever wore the blue and gold jersey wearing it right now, and I'm just pleasured and privileged to be on, uh, to be working alongside him. And you've done it again. What's it going to be like now to bring this back home to tip tomorrow night? It's, it's, it's special, you know, it's a special county. I think, obviously, you know, born and bred, there's blue and gold running down through my veins. You know, Portro is my first, first, first love, Tipperary second. And it's a special day, as I said. They don't really care whether Liam Sheedy's back in Turles tomorrow night once Liam McCarthy is. Congratulations, Liam. There, thanks. That could well be the line of the day as well there from Liam Sheedy. And you can see what sort of a perfectionist he is talking about how some of their passes went a bit astray today. But Tipperary, Liam Sheedy's Tipperary are the All-Ireland champions. We have more analysis and reaction to come. Tipperary celebrating the 28th All-Ireland title in their senior history at this level anyway. And um, they winning by 325 to 20 points against Kilkenny today. And we kind of cut off a conversation we had a, a little while ago about Donal Logue had suggested that he was surprised that Kilkenny didn't put up more of a of opposition, you said, once they win the man down in the second half. Yeah, well, look, I think that's, that's credit to Kilkenny in that you'd still believe, even though playing against uh, a great team like Tipperary, that they would. And I honestly do think, right, that they didn't make a good hand of it, even though they were down to 14 men. And I, there's no doubt the sending off was a huge impact on the game. Tipperary scored 217 to 10 points post the sending off. I think the puck outs tip won 85% of their puck outs compared to 25% 
from uh, Kilkenny and we had spoken in the first half how Tip were under pressure yeah. with their puckouts. So there's no doubt it was a huge impact. But I would say when Kilkenny, when they'll settle down and look at it, they'll be disappointed in how they tried to get around that situation. And there was a lot of balls that they'll be disappointed the way that suited that Tip defence. There's nothing nicer when you're a goalkeeper if you're a, a defence, if you're a point up, if there's a lot of long balls coming in, in into your defence. It's what you like dealing with. On the opposite end, the up side of it, Dwayne, I thought maybe Maybe you're okay if a man sent off, I would say that's the main turning point. But you don't automatically have to go man or man or back there. They seem to lose their shape. Like, I know you're a man down, so you will lose some bit of your shape. But the, the, the last thing they needed was to concede goals early in that second half. Are you talking about the defensive shape? Yeah, I, I would have still tried to drift men back. John Donnelly even stay deep, stay, keep our shape, don't concede goals, stay in the game. We're only a point down. But I mean, seven minutes in, the, the, once the third goal hit the back of the net, you end, the match is effectively over. Within, uh, Henry, you wanted to come in there. Was it not that they were being overrun by Tipperary? I think so, and I think the, the style of Brian Cody and Kilkenny is not to go restrict men back. They're not used to it, Anthony. No, I, I know just it's just to 20 points. I, I know, I know, I totally take that. But their style as well, Don, would be to go along then. We were short of man then, we were struggling. Adrian Mullen, as I said in advance, was sick. Didn't get to the pitch of the game at all. You know, TJ Reid struggled for a bit, came into it near the end. Walter wasn't winning his individual battles. So, and we depend on our key players. Like, you know, we didn't expect to be in this position. So, um, and Kilkenny are not used to playing the ball through the lines. I think that's what we probably needed to do to probably make more of an impact in Tipperary. And then once Tipperary pulled us open, like our half back line didn't dominate and they started to get ball into Seamus Canlan. They were going down the, uh, down the flanks and we were just under serious pressure. And when you have someone like Noel McGrath, and it'll be interesting to see during the week when his stats pop up of how many possessions he had in this game, how many assists he had. When you have someone linked player like that, like he ended up corner back taking the ball yeah. because he was the one man you could trust all myself for talking about. You give the ball to him all day because he will make things happen. And I suppose that's what Tipperary had and Kilkenny just didn't have those. They today. got that match up wrong, Henry, I would say, with Killian Buckley and Noel. Like he, Killian didn't look mobile enough for him. Yeah, we, no. we, we thought that Conor Brown was going yeah. to take that job, but obviously Killian did it. big time, uh, yeah. like he, he was everywhere. We, we'll get to know McGrath in a minute, but the goals obviously are what did the damage. Now, he obviously was involved in an awful lot of the Tipperary scores today. One in the first half and then the two devastating ones in the second half. Yeah, look, we know goals. We, we spoke about there's magic... There was magic in loads of players' hands out there today, right? But there's magic in those forwards' hands for Tipperary, right? We looked at this goal in, in, in the first half. Like, he re turned him inside out, really. But the confidence to go into the opposite side is what I would call the opposite side there. It was an outstanding finish. And it really was a boost that Tipperary needed at that time because Kilkenny, if they had actually taken more of the chances that they had early days, could have been a lot further ahead. So that was a okay. huge goal at that step to that. And a uh, massive fight because, I mean, that's that. This is exactly what they didn't need in the second half, though. You know, John McGrath, great block. I don't know who I think it might have been Conor Brown got back. But there's Shamey again, the predator, like the Gary Lineker, if you like, of Ireland. Ah, look, you know? look, look at the bravery of him going for yeah, that ball. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He was going in, he was getting in their leg or whatever it was. And this is the problem then. Obviously, Kenny were pulled out the field, loads of space inside. Shamey was, was struggling, uh, Hugh Lawler was struggling at this stage. What I like here is he's taking him on. It looks to me he's going for the pint, but this is Tipperary. This is what they can do. Brilliant crossfield pa pass and, you know, just a brilliant fi finish. And to be fair to John McGrath there, like, he makes it look easy. But how many times do you see a forward in that position taking the ball into their hand and a goalkeeper like Owen Murphy wrapping them up or whatever? So it was a But the second goal was an important one after half time. And Don was right, Parik Welch went for didn't have a major influence in the game. Went for it, missed it, spilled. And there was a lot of that happened with Kenny and they just weren't on the game. And, no better team to, to take advantage of that. Let's look in more detail at the orchestrator. Now, people will look at Noel McGrath's possessions in the second half, but you turned around midway through the first half and said, we're going to have to look at Noel McGrath more closely. Look, I think the man gave an absolute exhibition in terms of hurling, pure and utter hurling, right? And he was all over the field today, constantly in the support position. Here he is going forward. He's so comfortable. Like, how many players do you see getting the time to actually stand and, and plant the foot? Watch him here, right? Watch the way he looks up. He, he's always aware, he's thinking a step ahead. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? When he's looking at up the field there, what's happening on the other side? Yeah. We were watching it here. It was, was, it? Oh, was it? Like it was, he was actually watching that. His peripheral vision must be outstanding. It's OK for us that we're looking down from a height and it looks as if there's more spaces. You think of all those big bodies that are around him there and he's trying to see what's happening. 
that pass to me was one that's going to stick in my mind for a long time in terms of the game. And then how many times in the second half did we see him as that covering defender and being so intelligent? Another player would maybe dive in there and try and win possession, but he, no, short. Were Kikini a little bit naive on that though? We spoke about matchups at length beforehand, you know, and Hugh Lawler uh, did pick up Shamey, you know, and Hugh Lawler did his, you know, he fairly tough game, and, but he did okay. But like Noel, Man of the match in the semi final, you know, early season, superb. You know, was did it need more attention than a maybe not fully fit Killian Buckley? I would say, you know, there's so much play coming off him that you really maybe need to stand down on him completely. So you're probably hoping that Killian Buckley will be back to his fullest the experience. That he, yeah, that he's there. He's a great, great. Great guy, great time yeah. for the way I see him playing the game. You would have fenced oh, him. He's a super hurler, but not at his best style. Not at his best, I, I agree. But I, I think it came down to that Richie Lahey decision. I'd say it was very close when Brian Cody was looking at it. Lahey was going to be a better potential as impact an impact up. sub. But look, such other things, it's easy for us to yeah, talk about. Yeah, and, and of course, you don't know about impact subs. You're not taking into account the fact that you might be down to 14 men at the time. And how crucial was that red card and for it to come before half time as well? Yeah, and I think it gave Tip an ideal time to reorganise themselves in the second half. And, you know, the story tells the same. Don Logue went through 217 to 10 points. For me, again, Joanne, in real time, you know, this didn't look a red card to me. Yeah, in look, real time, but is it a red card? Ah, uh, look, this is going to be, you know, where is the common sense to this, right? I don't think Carl Barrett was absolutely injured. I know they're going to give out to me for saying this, but, you're right, it's that clip there. But it's slow motion, his arm goes up. I still don't think he hit him with his elbow in the face. For me, but he it was, was the hit, other card. But Carl Barrett was hit in the face by Richie Hogan. Yeah, but but I like, does it really it matter what arm. part of his body? I do, of course it does, because... You know, if, if uh, Carl Barrett dicks his head in or sticks his head down and he hits off uh, Richie's hand, it makes an impact. I just think it was a yellow card offence. I stand by that. I think Brian Gavin... Not by the rules of the game, which not they, by the rules which of the they game. highlighted and I, early I, I in the year. I totally understand that. But this game was influenced majorly by that decision. If there was a common sense decision, I think, for me, would have been a yellow card and we'd had a serious game. Do we get the referee to referee by common sense about what the rules say? Yeah, look at it. We would, a bit of both. We would, have had a better, we would have had a better final, Joanne, there's no doubt. But for me, the fourth angle would, would make it a conclusive red. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, real time again, yeah. I thought yellow. You know, but we were sitting up, up here, you know, looking down. But when I saw that fourth angle, I what said, is there is an element of elbow to head in. For me, it's a red no, I'm not saying it because it's Kilkenny. I just think it kind of the game was kind of over. The atmosphere was just sucked out. The life was gone out of it. And that's the biggest disappointment for me, you know. Is it is a disappointment? Do you think that Kilkenny, though, could have dealt with it better? We heard Liam Sheedy there talk about how well Cottle Barrett did in the spare man role. I mean, he essentially played as a sweeper for the entire second half I know, until but, he went off, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I know. Look, going back to it there, right? Nobody wants to see a player getting sent off. I agree. The game, it, it actually took yeah. the good out of the game, yeah. right? But you have to face it. In my mind, that's a red card, non-negotiable, right? Elbow to, to, to the head, has to go for it, right? Any, anything above the neck, we know the referees from the start of the year are really clamping down on it. So, like, I think it's a red all day, to be honest, right, is, is my view on it. I already said that I do think when Kilkenny looked back, right, there was a couple of balls, and it's easy to kind of get the highlights ones, you know, that maybe from, you know, that, that were coming especially from the defence, high balls, Ronan Maher, he was outstanding right in the second half and he, I thought he had a fantastic game but I do think Kilkenny did play into their hands by the way that they tried to transfer. I think it came from the conceding the two early goals Donald because the only way back in was through a goal, yeah. Do you know, you weren't going to pull it back on points well, I, I don't and then I, they went one dimensional I felt yeah, and well, it, was, it was all on Colin, Colin then to, and he had two men on him every time so but I, just thought, I don't think we're at the pace, we just weren't at the pitch of it you know, Conor Foley, Park was the half back line we spoke about mm. didn't dominate midfield. Yeah. You know, but, off, but you, you were the sending off. When the sending off happened then, right, there was no luxury. Like, Park Welch was always going to be trying to get back and make it hard on Kevin. Yeah. But when you're looking up the field and you see tip forwards, like, if, you, if the tip forwards have space, they're going to kill you. We yeah, know that, yeah, right? Yeah. But all of a sudden, the luxury being able to drop back yes. is gone. gone. Now you're Follow. looking up and you're seeing one on one. I think, I think you still could drop back. Early in that second half, and but that's keep not, it. But that's not that, that, that's not what they actually did. I know. No, <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, no. I know. And, and Henry saying it's not in the DNA, and I understand that. It and it, but it, it, I just thought if you're gonna if you conceded goals with the man down, it was going to murder. And I, like it, those two goals in seven minutes, it was game. It was kaput like for me. Mm. No. I, it, maybe you could have just shored it a little bit for a while, stay in it. Maybe tip get a bit panicky. 
but for a finish they could run in the subs and, and all oh, look yeah. good. Well, like. Speaking of that, we know Kilkenny obviously lost the minor final today to a very strong Galway team again. One of the things we brought up throughout the summer is the fact that Liam Sheedy was slightly questioned by the fact that he didn't bring in more of the younger players. Did we see towards the end of this match <laughs> so the we, future? We did, Joanne. No, the only thing you would say and there, and, and, uh, to be careful of if you're a tip man is that uh, the same thing happened in 2010 with the under-21 yeah. final the yeah. following week. But uh, no, there's no doubt about it. They, they, they ran him on. Mark Yo was first man on, I think, and, you know, massive player for UCC early on in the year, massive score. Uh, Willie Connors had a huge contribution when he came on. Um, ran Morris, with the ball. Ger Brown, look at the absolute yeah. pace when, when the Kilkenny lads are out in their feet. It's killing, like, and it, Liam was ready to unleash these fellas, he did, and yet he had the luxury to do it then when they were absolutely out in their feet. Well, I think it was five points they got off the bench against Wixford. It's actually five points again. Ger Brown got one, Willie Connors got two, Mark Yeo got one, and Jake Morris got one. So, you know, a lot of them are, you know, it's, you know, tip of under 25. It was, it was nice to be able to bring him on up today. Not, oh, not to was in the against Wexford. On, yeah. Yeah. Against Wexford, just to bring him on to dig, it, dig it out of the hole. Like, but uh, today they were brought on, I suppose, oh, in a nice, nice All the pieces with. of the jigsaw came together so nicely for Liam, you know. So it just, it just went so well. I know, and he got the kick back, in the setback, obviously, in the Munster final. And they've just built over time and just, you know, they're by far We've away. said that as well, no, two seasons were only into the new system, but the setback yeah. at the right time seems to be nearly the one you want. If you can, you know, you know you, there was a month of final. Like it is a true thing, you do learn more in defeat, right? Of course, the were sick that day, but like, you're looking at the, the path into the final with all due respect, right, to both Leash and Wexford. All of a sudden, there looks like serious potential here of getting back into an All-Ireland final and you're going to back against Tipperary in an All-Ireland final. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Tipperary are the champions. We'll be asking the lads perhaps for their player of the year or maybe their moment of the year after this break. Celebrations continuing for Tipperary and a huge disappointment obviously for their opponents as well but Shamey Callanan lifts Liam McCarthy, the drum and inch man, guiding his team to the All-Ireland hurling title and what a summer he has had. Goals in every single championship match that he has played. Oh. Though let's hear now from the Kilkenny man, Brian Cody. Brian, you've just come from a very disappointed Kilkenny dressing room. Uh, just not your day. Yeah, no, of course we're disappointed. Obviously, um, we just lost obviously, all there in finals, so what else would you be a bit disappointed? Um, obviously, very, very good the first half, very, very strong, right, totally even game. Richie then was sent off, so that obviously changed the complexion of the game in the series. Well. What was your view of the red card? Was it harsh? Well, I, I wasn't expecting a red card. It was very close to it, obviously. Um, I suppose... Um, I must. I, I can't definitively say, and no, I'm not yeah. going to start making excuses or, or, or crying about things either. I suppose the only thing I will say is that um, you need to be very, very certain to issue a red card. And there was a big discussion for quite a while between referee, linesman. He went over examining people and everything else, and obviously he wasn't too sure himself. But you'd want to be very, very sure to issue a red card. Yeah. So it was close enough to half time, which like it's a huge moment in any game. But so close to half time, then you had to reorganise things, I suppose, and, and, and organise yourselves with the man down. Were you happy with the way that went for you in the second half? I thought we were outstanding, to be honest about it. You know, I thought uh, honesty in the team, the spirit in the team, the genuineness in the team, the scoreboard doesn't look um, pretty for certain, I know that, but uh, uh, the genuineness in the team and the way they kept fighting at the bitter end, and, you know, and obviously the scoreboard would suggest our backs were, were under pressure, but our backs were heroic, I thought myself. And you needed a break, just a, a goal would have kick-started it towards the end and it just didn't come for you. Oh, we didn't get a goal and again, like I said, no excuses and um, Tipperary won it and won it well and it's obviously very, very disappointing but that's, that's the way it went. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Brian Cody, obviously hugely d disappointing day for him. He's had more successes, Henry, than he has had at this moment. How do you think he will, will feel after this? I mean, we know that he's not 
He's not really given us. He obviously is half in agreement with you on the red card. But will he? But will he be disappointed with the way they they reacted to it in the second half? No, I, I don't think so because I think what we were speaking about is more the tactical awareness and the tactical use of the ball and stuff. I think what Brian looks for first of all is character and that genuineness that he's spoken about. And I think. Kilkenny tried as best they could, but I just don't think they were at the level today. They didn't perform like they could. They didn't perform like they did in the semi-final. And I just think, you know, the, the couple of things in the lead-up, Richie Hogan was carrying a bit of a knock, you know, Adrian being sick. Those small things matter on the biggest stage. And I think he's very deflated there now. And I think he's probably very upset over the sending off because it was right in front of himself. And I think it had a massive bearing on the game. It's funny how he saw it and Liam did it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, to get to it, it's a different kind of season this year to what it has been the last couple of years, even though we had Tip and Kenny back in the final. What was the standout moment for you this summer? Yeah, well, there was lots of occasions and stuff like that that happened, you know, things we didn't expect to happen. And uh, yeah, but just as a moment, Joanne, I, I, and we were here near it as well, and Limerick were coming back at Kenny. I just thought Shane Dowling's goal <laughs> stood out for me as a moment, a skill in the year, absolute. You know, a ball threw it over his head and doubled on it into the corner of Owen Murphy's net. For me, it was the standout piece of skill in, in a year. Maybe that didn't quite live up to last year. I think we had still massive, we had massive semi-finals. Mm. Today, it was coloured a little bit by yeah. the sending off, I suppose. Yeah, it's a pity that that could get lost. I'm glad you brought that up, given the fact that Limerick did lose that. What was your your one? I think the finale at the Leinster Championship, right? Wexford against Kilkenny, Dublin, Galway, that Saturday night. At one stage, I think everybody yeah. was either in or out. I remember I was listening to it on, on a radio after in a game down, down in Cork, and there was a couple of lads gathered around it, and the excitement of it, and I think it was a, a fitting finale to the Leinster Championship, was out, which was outstanding this year. So that, for me, is, is one moment that will stick in my head, that, that excitement around that, that moment. And Henry? I think it goes on the back of Dawn's, it's the excitement. So, uh, and the most exciting day of the championship this year was when the underdogs come and do a job on the favourites and that was Leash obviously you know it was a brilliant brilliant occasion and to see the Leash public get really behind and you know on the field after that was a wonderful wonderful occasion so that moment is, is special for anyone in sport so that's the one even the scenes against Tip with the Leash crowd the yeah, crowd they yeah, brought the end, you know, yeah, yeah. such excitement it's just so, so much good for a county yeah. it was obviously always going to be hard to live, live up to last year because the round robins last year particularly in Munster but in Leinster as well to a degree do you feel that it, it did in some ways? We didn't have the same sort of excitement in, in the semi-finals as well, but there were still some so many great moments elsewhere. Oh, we had loads of great moments, even oh, like yeah. you know occasions like even the Cork Tipperary game at, at the start of the year. Tip yeah. ran out, but that was, that was a huge occasion down in Cork. Speaking to people that were at it, we had fantastic other games. I mentioned the the last day in Leinster. The two semi-finals we had were yeah. epic, epic, yeah. epic semi-finals. So like I know last year raised the bar so high, and it was. Everybody was talking about so many games. One small thing I will say on that is the weather last year yeah. was absolutely <laughs> outstanding yeah. compared to this year. And it does have an impact. We oh, saw it out yeah. there today, yeah, today in terms of the amount of balls that are dropping, stuff like that. So again, I wouldn't underestimate the impact that the weather actually has on good hurling, Joanne. But hurling people, the GA, we can all be very happy with the hurling championship this year. Well, let's do a preview to tonight's show because there, the next few hours are going to be filled with scraps basically over in Donnybrook about <laughs> who's in the team of the year and who is the, the hurler of the, the year. No, Joanne, this is very quick. I uh, know, I warned you. Who's your, who's your hurler of the year, Henry? Well, my hurler of the year, I think there's three standout candidates. I think it's uh, Noel McGrath, Seamus Cannell, and, and TJ Reid. And Seamus Cannell was very hard done by, I felt, in 2016 not to win it. So he scored a goal in every game. You know, he's a clinical finisher, he's the captain. I would just give it to him, just slightly above Noel McGrath. He's been nominated three times before and he's never won it. Anthony uh, Daly. Yeah, I wonder if the old system come in, will, will they split the Tipperary vote or whatever? That crack, and uh, I've heard so much about that, I don't understand, it wasn't there my time. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just about go along with Henry. I, do, I, do, I think Noel has an outstanding chance yeah, of being brilliant. man of the match tonight. And he was man of the match in the semi final, so you know, he, he was massive. But I mean, Callanan as captain every single day has delivered for them, and uh, I'd nearly just tipped my cap to him, yeah. There are a number of people suggesting that actually a Cork man should be in that shortlist and not perhaps two tip men and a Kilkenny man. In terms of Patrick Horgan, Patrick Horgan has been outstanding. Like, yeah. you, know, you talk about you talk about the moment. In, in terms of the, uh, the the Limerick goal from Dowling, the strength in the wrist I think was amazing. To have that strength to finish it and place the ball, like Patrick Horgan has given some exhibitions on his, on knees, loop, here, on his knees. Remember that? Yeah. Like, that yeah. was an out, like that was that, absolutely. That could brilliant. have been a moment of the year. And the skill that was involved in that was outstanding. But I think when it'll come down to it, you see the thing about the final is it colours the whole year yeah, so much, yeah, yeah. right? Like. 
TJ Reid, obviously, but I've become a huge fan of him over the last couple of years. I don't think, I'm not so sure that, like, is there another player in the championship at the moment that could match him? I don't think there is, no. right? But because the final colours it so much, mm. and I'm just going to slightly go against the two boys, right? I'm <laughs> yeah, gonna like go, it all. Yeah, <laughs> like it Come on. I'm going to go with Noel McGrath. I just think his performance today, and I know we might be a bit blinded by today, like I said, but his performance today, every aspect of it, the intelligence, the vision, the wrist work. I go back to the first half when the game was in the melting mm. pot and so many balls, to use that word, the snigging that was going on from a Kilkenny point of view and, and both teams obviously, but knocking the ball away. He was the one who was able to control the ball. Like I said, when it was 15 against 15. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the third goal actually. It's just came to mind now. Noel McGrath won the ball under the Hogan stand and he kind of uh, backhand passed the ball. Just got it out of there, got it out of there in your own, and two points and scored a goal. And I hope they highlight it tonight because that's just the vision he has, and he's just a joy to watch. And just to finish off and sum up the year, because Limerick were these great All Ireland champions mm. last year, and they felt so hard done by in the semi final. Go away, you expect if they have Joe Canning mm. back and have all their next year. Is it going to be even more competitive, do you think, next year? Oh, yeah, look, I think again, you know. Um, Look at Leinster, you know. Wexford coming. The leash coming back as well. Like Wexford now seem to be the strongest there. And then Galway, Stingen and Kilkenny. I mean, knocked out Limerick and knocked out Cox. So look at Leinster alone. And like Watford now will be, you know, there's a vacancy there. Who'll go in there now? They get a lift from that, I suppose, again. So Munster, you'd be hoping Clare would, would, would come back. You know, they didn't make the three this year. So... Yeah, we, we never had it so good, really, no, in terms of so, levelness. Yeah, I think no one expected Kilkenny to be here, and probably Tipperary as well. And they're here, and the same last year with Limerick, you know. So I think it's for every team in the Championship, it's just so wide open. And I wonder this time next year, will all three of you be in the studio, or will any of you be on the sidelines somewhere? Don't load? <laughs> what, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of silence well, there. Yeah. For God's sake, I'd say, I'd say it's safe enough, unfortunately for you, you'll be looking at me, Joanne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On that note, uh, thank you very much. That's all we have time for after another incredible season of live Intercounty Championship Hurling. Thank you to Donalo, to Anthony and to Henry for their time throughout the summer and throughout today as well. And to all of our uh, hurling pundits as well. It is not quite over yet, though. Much more to come on the Sunday night, the Sunday game tonight, including the team of the year, reaction from the Winners Hotel and the 2019 All-Ireland Final Man of the Match. So join us from half past nine. And so a decade of championship hurling has ended just as it began with Liam Sheedy's Tipperary Kings at Croke Park. Goodbye. Like, wait.